radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. Listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening, Fade to Black. Bespoke Radio for the masses. Uh, <laughs> yeah, can you tell it's Monday? Oh, man, what a week we've got coming up. That's right. Today's Monday, May 21st, 2018. 140 days into the new year, almost halfway through. 225 days left. We are live from a bunker somewhere in beautiful downtown Burbank, California. And I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world. All across the United States, hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the Planets. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? Seriously, how you doing? There is nothing. I am serious. I wish all of you, I wish all of you could experience what it's like for me to come in on a Monday and sit down in this chair and say hello. It is the most extraordinary feeling. So when I say, how you doing? I mean, how you doing? I I really mean, how you doing? It's great to be with you. Wow, what a week. Um, Now, a little programming note. Uh, We uh, had a very special broadcast lined up tonight, and we're going to reschedule things. Uh, We had some transmission issues, literally, uh, with Armenia. So we are uh, working on all of that. But we were going to have Teresa Yanaris on the show with us next week. And I was um, uh, speaking with uh, Teresa a few days ago about about things. You know, she's a very fun conversation. And I said, so, Teresa, what's going on? <laughs> she goes, she literally goes, I, I don't know, Jimmy. Uh, what's going on with you? I said, I don't know. Why don't you tell me what's going on? Well, uh, it's really funny. And then we got into the conversation. And uh, we knew... Uh, that there was a lot to talk about uh, for our community. And so, you know, we, that's it. You know, we had, we had plans, but uh, with the turn of events today with the, you know, with the internet and what's going on in Armenia, uh, I immediately uh, uh, said, you know, we've got to get Teresa on the timing is perfect for the show. And, And Teresa said, absolutely. I'm here. I'm here. So, Tonight, Teresa Yanaros, and we're going to talk about what is all over this community right now, which is the Inner Earth Invitation. And if you haven't read about it, I don't know what rock you've been under, but if you haven't read about it, just go and, and, and take a sneak peek at that. You can go look at uh, Teresa's articles. Uh, you can go over to uh, Stillness. You can go to her YouTube videos. Well, you might want to do that after the show because she's going to be with us here in 25 short minutes to talk about all of this. And uh, it's it's pretty interesting. So, Teresa, at the bottom of the hour. Tomorrow night, Linda Moulton Howe. Yeah. You know, it's funny. 
uh, Linda is always great when she's on the show. And she shoots me this email. She goes, okay, this is what I would like to cover. Is that cool with you? Let me know. You know, and I was like, geez, that's an eight hour show. And I said, okay, you know what? Let's do it all. So we did decided we're going to discuss everything from A to Z, from artificial intelligence to UFOs. <laughs> Yeah, where's the Z, Jimmy? Uh, Zimbabwe will be discussed, and that will be tomorrow night. Wednesday night, George Nori is uh, back with us. It's been a while since he's been on the show, and uh, so much to talk about with George. And uh, got a couple of surprises, uh, not only with George, but for George. He doesn't know about that yet, and that's going to go down Wednesday night. And also... Uh, Victoria uh, Gavarian is going to be here, and she is one of the visionaries, creators, and producers and partners of Contact in the Desert. So she's going to be here to talk about some of the surprises and the new things that are going on, and, and maybe we'll give away some tickets or do something like that. And that'll be a Wednesday night with Victoria. And I've got a couple of uh, surprise guests that will be here um, that she doesn't know about. So, sh- you know, keep that down. Keep that on the down low. Thursday night is another Fader Night with John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom Live, followed by open lines all night long. And there you go. Okay, now, a um, couple of uh, uh, quick things really quick. A uh, couple of quick things really quick. There you go. I need another shot of coffee after saying something that dumb. Okay, here we go. Did I say I was excited to be here? On Stellar, you can go and find us now at On Stellar. Uh, you can find me, uh, very simple, Jimmy Church. You can find Fade to Black, very simple. It's called Fade to Black. You can find the Game Changer Network, very simple. It's called the Game Changer Network. You can find Rita. Rita is there. Okay, now we are phasing out Facebook, so spending all of our time over at On Stellar, and you can go and do that now, OnStellar.com. If you haven't already registered, go and do that. It is the next great, most amazing social media platform, Internet 3.0, built for us. And it is amazing. So head over to OnStellar, onstellar OnStellar.com. I get messages every single day from people just like you going, Jimmy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, just thank you for OnStellar. This is amazing. Thank you. Uh, Nothing but positivity uh, coming from... Everybody that is over at On Stellar. So you do want to go check it out, OnStellar.com. Very simple. Social media has never been like this before. Go and check it out. You can still follow us on Twitter at J Church Radio. The sandbox is hashtag F2B on Twitter. We use TweetDeck. Get yourself TweetDeck and, and get going. Uh, YouTube, of course. You can uh, still subscribe to us over on YouTube. All of this is phasing out. It's uh, pretty extraordinary how cool On Stellar is. But anyway, everything is uh, Jimmy Church or Fade to Black. And you can go and follow, like, and subscribe right now over on our website. And if you still use email, you can still email me, jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. Just make it good, and it'll get through here to me. Uh, Breaking news. Start off the show with this. The on-again, off-again, on-again North Korea summit is, well, off again. (laughs) <laughs> Stay tuned, though. It'll be on again tomorrow. All right. There you go. It's really true. Um, I can't, uh, you know, I say this every single year, but here we are. Uh, next week is Contact in the Desert, which is June 1st through the 4th, 2018. It's at Indian Wells Palm Springs this year and it, it has moved from Joshua Tree. It's being held at the Renaissance Resort and Spa right there in Indian Wells, Palm Springs, Southern California. Four days, amazing events. Uh, We've got uh, everything booked up uh, for the entire weekend. Of course, Friday night, we'll be broadcasting Fade to Black Live. Um, All day Saturday, we have events. We have uh, the uh, George Norrie Luncheon, which is in the afternoon right there on Saturday, uh, you can come and hang out with us. There'll be some other speakers there, too, as well. 
And if you uh, want to come have lunch with Rita and I, you can squeeze in at our table and uh, go and get your tickets for the George Nori Luncheon. That is on uh, Saturday afternoon. Saturday evening, uh, I'll be over with George again for the awards ceremony and dinner. And then I'll be hosting the uh, magic show gala event in the uh, in the main auditorium uh, that evening on Saturday. And then when I'm done with that, I'll be back to the dinner. So I'm just going to disappear for about 15 minutes and go and, and do that and then come back. But So that's, uh, that's Saturday. And then Sunday, uh, the panel. So I'll be hosting the closing night uh, ceremonies and panel. Um, and uh, it's I, I've set it up this year where I'm going to have some surprise guests. So that's what I decided to do. I was going to do an all surprise panel. That that was <laughs> I was literally going to put everybody to be announced because I, I wanted it's it's Sunday night, you know. And I, I wish I could have every speaker on that panel because it's the last event of uh, the weekend. So that'll be Sunday night. So come and hang out with us and uh, contact in the desert. It is uh, the biggest, best funnest, coolest UFO conference in the entire world. So come and hang out with us right there in Palm Springs. All right. Oh, uh, let's see. What else have we got going on? Oh, I don't I do want to mention Soul Tech Gathering. Uh we'll be teaching up at East City Ranch this August 9th through the twelfth. And uh Corey Good's gonna be there. We've got James Gilliland, Jason Quitt, Matthew Ryan, Michaela Sheldon, Teresa, who is on with us tonight, is going to be there. Uh, Holly Marie, Mary uh, Gabrielle, Ashley, John Lund, and Dana Harvey are all going to be up there at uh, at East Eddy Ranch for one of the most amazing weekends that uh, we can ever imagine putting together. And we're doing it all for you. So 300 Fader Knots are going to be there gathered and uh, we've got the Field of Dreams. We're going to be sky watching. We're going to be teaching all day long. Food, music, fun, adventure, all of that going down at East Eddy Ranch. And I cannot wait for all of you. Last year in Joshua Tree. Let me see this picture. Oh, yeah. Where was... Okay, where was this? Oh! Um, this was at... Rita, is, that, is this at our breakfast place? Is this at the country kitchen with that only seats uh, 20 people? And how many are in this picture? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And plus me taking the picture. Oh, I'm in this picture. I didn't take it. So plus whoever's taking this picture. Who took the picture? Yeah, we uh, we owned that place. That's really cool. That's going to get a retweet right there. Oh, Eric posted this. Very cool, the country kitchen. And, uh, okay, so contact in the desert. Um, but what I did want to mention is uh, today we shipped out, well, we did last week too as well, but we shipped out a ton of stuff. And we tried to get everything. We're up to date, by the way, with all the fade to black gear uh, through to today. I wanted to make sure that everybody got their stuff in time uh, for contact in the desert, no matter when it was done. So um, there you go. Okay? There may be a few stragglers out there, uh, bad addresses and stuff like that, but uh, we we did everything that we could. And if it turns out that you were the one, two, or three out of the hunters that we shipped to, uh, that uh, messed up your address or whatever, come see us at Contact in the Desert, and we'll get you all hooked up. Uh, there's only a few of you. Hopefully you're going to Contact in the Desert. If not, you may have to wait, but we're doing what we can. But we're all caught up. Just uh, so much work, so much fun. But uh, everybody got their fade to black gear today. And so, uh, well, over the last week, I should say. So when you get your gear, take a picture. It's my favorite thing to do. Take a picture of you and your shirt or you and your shirt and hat or you and your hat. Whatever you want to do, send it to me. We have got hundreds and hundreds. I've got a fade to black T-shirt folder on my desktop. And we're going to be uh, building up a page with everybody, you know, a Hall of Fame 
with all of you. So do. Don't forget that. Please take a picture and send it to me. I'll, I'll post it, but it's also going to go into our Hall of Fame. All right. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. Over 850 archive shows right there. Just $2 a month. Click on the podcast banner at jimmychurchradio.com. You can also become a fader night and get all that faded black gear I was just talking about. You get commercial free downloadable archives. You get the bunker cam. And if you get the game change, you get a private email to me. You get all of that stuff. But uh, you will also get the faded black gear with the game changer. And if you renew your game changer, oh, that's, uh, that's, um, you know what's funny, Teresa, this picture here? I was having so much fun. This It's one of those pictures. That was so cool that I don't remember taking, right? You see it later and you go, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is just, uh, that's the, this is actually, I think, uh, could this be when we met? Is that the moment? I'll have to ask Teresa that. Yeah. That's a great picture. Thank you for posting that, Teresa. Um, okay, let's uh, let's jump right into it. Let's get the show cracking. Today, happy birthday to, you ready? Mr. T is 66. Yeah, Mr. T, the A-team, played Clubber Lang in Rocky Three. Today, Mr. T is 66. Our dead guy's birthday today is Notorious B.I.G., 1972 to 1997, died at the age of 24. Also known as Biggie Smalls, considered to be one of the greatest rappers of all time, rose to fame with the release of his debut album, Ready to Die, in 1994, which made him an East Coast hip-hop icon and won him a Billboard Music Award for Rap Artist of the Year in 1995. He was gunned down right here in Los Angeles in 1997 over at the Peterson Automotive Museum, and despite much publicity and controversy, his murder became a cold case. His album, Life After Death, released posthumously in March of 1997, was nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Rap Album. Happy birthday, Notorious B.I.G. On this day in history, 1992. Wow, how quickly we forget these things, right? Amy Fisher. The so-called Long Island Lolita is arrested for shooting Mary Jo Budafuco on the front porch of her Massapequa, New York home. Wow. Yeah, 1992. Fader fact. Installed in the year of our Lord, 1410, the world's oldest astronomical clock is still in operation in Prague. And that is a fader fact. All right. Um, oh, let's see here. Uh, cool. Sukalo says, hey, just to let you guys know, he's listening on set. That's weird, huh? What's up? What's what's up, Giorgio? I think we're gonna have him on the show this week. So, all right. Uh, tonight, Teresa Yanaris is here, and before I get to Teresa, I wanted to. I wanted to. You know, I thought about this, and I decided that I needed to just say that a few days ago we got the news. Gina Zamparelli, one of my oldest and dearest friends, is in the hospital. And it's not good. It's not good. In fact, it's 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 really, really bad. And as difficult as it is for me to think about and to talk about right now on the air, I just have to because she and her family were such a influence on myself. But she fell uh, back on April 25th. She was uh, taken to the ER. And the first scans showed a mass in her brain. On May 4th, 2000, 
two weeks ago. Uh, she was diagnosed uh, with a very, very aggressive cancer in her brain. And because of the location, there is nothing that can be done. And I have known Gina. Rita has known Gina. I have known Gina and her family since I was 21 years old. I'm 54. I met her through her father, Mario. And I was very close to her and her sister, Andrea, um, and her father, Mario, at a time for me when life was very, very different. Um, back then in the early 80s in Pasadena and in Hollywood and Los Angeles, it was a, it was a, a very amazing time uh, for, for not only Southern California, but this country and the world. And the Zamparelli family showed me what life could be. And those memories that I had back then uh, will stay with me forever. Gina is the daughter of Sri Lankan model and Miss Universe Maureen Hingert and American designer Mario Armand Zamparelli. Um, Mario was uh, one of the coolest uh, people that I've ever come to know, and uh, very, very, very impactful on me. He was Howard Hughes's personal artist, and Mario was responsible for painting the Hughes Air West commercial fleet of jetliners, those crazy colors. Back then, they called them the Flying Bananas. <laughs> And that was Mario. That was uh, Mario and his design and his idea. And uh, Gina is the first woman concert promoter to promote concerts in major venues with national level artists in the United States. She sold out every concert in over a decade of shows in Los Angeles, helping to break in many bands and secure them record deals. She has produced concerts here in, in, in Los Angeles at Perkins Palace, The Roxy, Whiskey O'Go Go, Hollywood Palladium, Santa Monica Civic, and the Wadsworth Theater. The string of bands uh, are endless, and but they include like Motley Crue, Wasp, Metallica, Poison, Jane's Addiction, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Rat, Armored Saint, Megadeth, Guns N' Roses, and Van Halen, and a hundred others that I just don't have the time to mention right now. There isn't a band from Hollywood back in the day that doesn't owe Gina something. But it's how I met her that is the best story of them all. And I'll tell you why. Everybody has a Gina Zamparelli story. But I can't, when I came to Southern California, um, I didn't know Gina Zamparelli. I didn't know the Zamparelli name. I didn't understand. I didn't know. Right? I'm the new kid on the block. And so her father, Mario, was a client of the art studio that I worked at, and I got to know him. And a uh, really cool guy, you know, good-looking Italian guy, dashing, all that stuff. And one day he comes into the uh, art studio, and he goes, so, Jimmy, uh, what else do you do? And, I've, you know, I've got my long hair and, uh, you know, and stuff. And, but I didn't want to tell him I was a guitar player. You know, it's Mario Zamparelli, you know. And uh, I said, well, uh, you know, I'm into uh, UFOs. Yeah, okay, okay. What else? I said, uh, I play guitar. Exactly. And I said, what? And he goes, you've got to meet my daughters, Gina and Andrea. And I said, okay, because Gina is a concert promoter and Andrea manages bands. You've got to meet them. I said, all right. And, uh, and he goes, in fact, Andrea is in the car right now. All right, I all right. Takes me outside, walk up to his uh, car, Cadillac, and uh, Andrea's in the passenger seat, and uh, and he says, Andrea, this is Jimmy, Jimmy, this is Andrea. Jimmy's a guitar player. She goes, Oh man, Dad. Well, anyway, I meet Andrea, and uh, I give her my phone number, and uh, later on that night, that night, I get home from work. My phone rings. It's Andrea. And she goes, uh, Jimmy, what are you doing tonight? This is a 100% percent 
absolutely fact as it happened story. I said, uh, nothing. What's going on? She goes, um, we're going to come by and pick you up and take you to Hollywood. I said, who's we? Me and my sister, Gina. I said, okay. All right. So later on that night, car pulls up in front of my house in Pasadena, and it's Gina Zamparelli and her sister, Andrea. And they take me to Hollywood. And I did not know who Gina was. I did not know who Andrea was. I, I just didn't know. And we we get there, and <laughs> we get there, and it was like walking around with, I don't even know how to put it into words, her impact and who she was and her influence. I had no idea. And we go to the Rainbows, the first stop. We pull up to the Rainbow, and uh, the seas parted, and she introduced me to everybody that I had seen on MTV earlier that week. <laughs> and I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. What's going on? Well, anyway, it was one of the coolest nights of my life. I met Doug Aldrich that night, oddly enough. Uh, uh, Poison, three years before they ever did their uh, first album. And on and on and on and on and on. I'm not going to waste your time with that. But the point is, from that night forward, from that, that day that Mario um, had had brought me into his family like that we were very 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 close and uh mario helped me out in my art career he gave me a lot of uh, stuff right out of his garage he gave me drawing boards and chairs and flat files and and pens and and ink and and triangles and lights and shelving and set me up with an art studio and uh, right out of his garage, you know, the stuff from his Hughes office building. And and I spent many nights over there at the house with the three of them uh, sitting up all night, eating pizza and drinking wine and just learning about life. And for for the last, now I've got to go back. This is a long time. This is 1984. And... I was so close with the family, and there they were always there to to help me, um, uh, to to show me the ropes, but also to do to learn how to dream and to dream big. And this news, um, Andrea uh, passed away uh, a while ago. Mario passed away. Uh, five or six or seven years ago. And one of the things that I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to Mario, but uh, Gina said to me, uh, she said, yeah, you know, he would like to see you. I said, okay, cool. And she said to me on the phone, she goes, you know, my dad and I talked about you last night for, for, for so long. And Jimmy, you know, he loves you. And it just meant so much that after, you know, decades of time that goes by that, you know, these these relationships stay there. Well, Mario died two days later, and I never got a chance to say goodbye to him. But now this, this news after um, Andrea's left this earth, and now this news about Gina. So I wanted to share that with all of you. Um, uh, it's 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 just a it's just a bad thing. It's just a bad thing. All right. So thank you for uh, letting me get that out, and I will uh, be right back uh, with our guest Teresa Yanara. Stay with me.
You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go Beckley Tepe. What can I say about the most popular tea on the internet? And what do customers say about life change tea at getthetea.com? A lot. But by federal law, we at getthetea.com cannot make claims to how this product can enhance your health. We cannot even post our testimonies without being in compliance. So how do we get past the hump? Try our products at GetTheTea.com and see for yourself. You can send us a testimony, but we just can't post it. Bummer. Our products are GMO-free and organic. We pride ourselves in being the best we can be, and we urge you to take charge of your health. We're 11 years strong, and many of our customers have shared their successes with friends and family. Protect your colon. Log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. 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 Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show. On the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Win big with KGRA this summer. Tickets and hotel accommodations to the biggest conferences. Autograph books and DVDs. Chances to win all-inclusive conference cruises. And private dinners with your favorite KGRA hosts. Click the contest tab at KGRARadio.com for your chance to win big this summer. Your contact for the best alternative talk radio on the planet. KGRARadio.com. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Massey, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. It's Monday, kicking off an amazing week here tonight. Teresa Yanaris is with us tomorrow night. Linda Moulton Howe. Wednesday night, George Nori and Victoria Gavarian are going to be here. And uh, got some surprise guests uh, throughout the week. <laughs> I guess Giorgio is going to do a drive-by. So we're going to do that, too, as well. Thursday night is another Fader Night with John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom Live. Followed by open lines all night long. Tonight, Teresa joins us. Uh, She is a millennial advocate for spiritual enlightenment, shares inspirational perspectives through her multimedia project and YouTube channel called Divine Frequency and provides spiritual coaching to assist the co-creative consciousness in manifesting a positive future. Her bubbly personality, yes, she has that. Down-to-earth perspective and a genuine curiosity uh, serve as a springboard for all of her projects. And her book, What is Magic? is a spiritual coaching and tarot readings and interviews, research projects, uh, dissemination of disclosure and outing of deep state atrocities and 
Collaboration with alternative news media website, uh, Stillness in the Storm, and others help uh, souls aligned with her vision of actively seeking a positive future for the co-creative consciousness. And tonight we're going to discuss the recent Inner Earth Invitation that spread around our uh, community over the last week. And its connection, are you ready, to a dream she reported reported about just days before the announcement. I'm going to get to the bottom of all of that as I welcome back Teresa Yanaris. Teresa, good evening. How are you? I'm doing well, Jimmy. How are you doing tonight? Just thank you. Thank you for the emergency today. I mean, you're the best. I mean, this is a family, and we're going to have you on next week, and you could have played the diva card, you know. Jimmy, I'm booked. You know, I've, I've, I've got stuff to do. But, yeah, you, you, <laughs> you came in tonight, and the timing is probably better. It's called synchronicity that you were on tonight the next week because of what has been going down in our community. Um, and right. Yeah, and we're going to get to all of that. We're going to get to all of that. I want to address a couple of things uh, first. Uh, I enjoy your energy, and from the very first time that uh, Rita and I were able to uh, sit and watch you give some of the your first public uh, appearances, we were like, okay, um, Teresa is on it. She's on it. And, and we got it from the word go, but there are those out there that would say that you're too young to have it, right? You're too young to, to, uh, to have these experiences and to share and to teach. But I see it the opposite. But when you and I know you've heard these criticisms, how do you address that when somebody says you need to be older to speak like this? Well, I just I do what I do, Jimmy. That's the reality. I when I was 26 years old, I looked around me. You know, I had my successful corporate job. I have a degree. I was in uh, a good company in Santa Barbara. And I just looked around and I thought I'm in a matrix and there's something more for me. So I quit my job. I sold everything I owned. I moved across the country to start my own business. And I was reading this book called Journey of Souls by Dr. Michael Newton, which made me start having these out-of-body experiences that I could not explain. And it only expanded from there. The last four years of my life have been really crazy, as you know, personally. And things just really started happening for me on the mystical side. So I wrote a book about it, What is Magic? And after I wrote that book, I started speaking publicly and ever since then it's just expanded for me and I'm just going to keep following this path. And you were talking about synchronicity and I've just been following that path of synchronicity and I have felt more supported by the universe and my community as I just keep speaking my truth. And I keep having these unexplainable experiences that especially in the last year have expanded so much that I'm actually working on a new book. So that's kind of where I'm at. And I just, I just keep my heart space open and I just stay authentic and that's all I can say. That's all I can do. Yeah, you know? and, and the other part of it is what I think is that you you look younger than you are. Okay? Now I'm not saying that you're seventy five years old. That's not what I'm <laughs> suggesting. Here. But you certainly look younger than you are, and most people don't know um how old you are and you've got all the opportunity in the world to have uh, the life experience uh, the life experience needed to discuss these very important uh subjects right well and something that's always been with me my whole life i've always been looking forward okay what's next for me am i learning something here i'm not learning i'm not growing and then i'll shift forward and i've always been that way that's why I graduated from high school at 16 and I graduated from college at 20 and I just kept pushing and going and I've, I have been through a lot and I'm 30 years old and I feel like every year it's like I'm a completely different person because I look back at the prior year and I just push myself to have as many experiences as I can that are very deeply meaningful. And so that comes into play with what I talk about publicly, which is connecting to magic, which is our conscious awareness, being uh, present in the moment and being able to obtain everything that you can out of your experience. And there's there's another part of you and your generation and the generation underneath you. Believe it or not, you're not the youngest generation now. 
right? Right. You're you're you're, you're going to be like me. Wait wait till you have to talk about this in ten years uh, when you talk <laughs> about the generations underneath you. But um, you and your uh, awakening and your enlightenment uh, is shared by those generations. Uh, uh, right around you and below you, they are they, they are fully awoke, you know. And I know that's poor English, but they're fully awoke. I used to uh, the conversations that I have with those that are under thirty are conversations that I thought were reserved for uh, you know fifty. You know, it, 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 the the conversations are heavy. And they're they're open and they they're so on the money. What is it about you and your generation and the generation underneath you that make you guys so awoke and and understanding? I, I, it blows my mind. Uh, do you have an explanation? <laughs> I wish I did. No, well, I I do believe in the collective consciousness, and I think that we are collectively expanding. So I wouldn't even just say that it's all of the younger folks. It's everybody on this planet right now is really being activated. So that's manifest in the younger generations from a younger age because everybody's going through this shift together. Together, and I also believe that because of the internet. I mean, we could talk about the internet, but it just creates a space where you can go out, you can find people that are having similar experiences that you're having. So you don't feel so alone. And because we've created this global community now, since the nineties, the new generations coming into this world, everything's so much more accessible. So their experience is able to expand so much faster and with so much more clarity from a younger age. You know, I, I, it doesn't matter if I'm speaking to somebody that's eight, nine, 10, 11 years old, which I've done a lot. I enjoy that. But, you know, 15, 16, 18, 20 years old, talking about these subjects that even for me, as an adult at the age of 40, 45, were difficult for me to accept and to grasp. And, to, you know, you got to keep the mind open so you can move forward. But some of it is is it's difficult to understand it. It gets into physics and astrology and astronomy and in history, uh, all of these complex things. And we start throwing in 3D, 4D, 5D uh, and vibrations and chakras. It's, it's 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 a mind blowing subject. But these kids know more about it than I ever have. And I, I I'm so appreciative, but it's it's just shocking to me. There's. It's like it's in their DNA. Something's been activated. Well, it makes you wonder if more people on the planet are having more mystical experiences in the last 20 years, if that's actually expanded too. And when you have access to learning about the technology that you have inside your body because of the internet and other pe- being able to connect to other people that are having similar experiences, it seems as though that would mean it would expand and be more accessible to everyone. Well, and and for you, is it easier to speak to your age group, or are you okay with you know uh, those that are older than you, you know us old guys like me? Well, I, I love speaking to my age group and younger, but I do find that the the majority of my audience is my age and older. I don't really know why that's the case, but it is. And, you know, when I do come across people that are the younger generations that find my material, I get really excited because I, I have now a platform to ask them a bunch of questions um, and learning how to reach those younger generations, I think, is key. And that's definitely something that I've been focusing on uh, with breaking down. For those of you who watch my YouTube channel, I've been breaking down symbolism in the music industry, which I think is very interesting to the younger generations. I had uh, a video about Ariana Grande go semi-viral, and that was really interesting to see. So I am venturing out um, to try to bring these esoteric occultic topics to the younger generations that, in a way that's more accessible to the mainstream. Yeah, and the I, I want to know, I want to feel good that, you know, after I, you know, depart this plane, that we're in good hands. And and I feel that not only are we in good hands, but the future is bright. I wish I could hang out for another 50, 60, 80 years <laughs> to see where things, where, where you guys are going to take this. 
it's going to be fun. I'm really excited. I think that every, I feel like everything's sort of coming together. Everybody's doing their thing. And what I focus on bringing to the table is connecting people to their personal power, their mission, what they need to be doing. And I think the more that everybody connects to that within themselves, understanding that they are here for a reason and they need to be doing that, the more everybody does that, we're going to expand more and more uh, in the collective with our co-creative power, which is the most important thing. And I think people are waking up to that. They're realizing, wait a second, I am activated. I am important. I am necessary to what this is that we're creating. And the more people stand up and they shake off this disempowerment that's been projected onto us, you shake that off and you feel your soul shine through. And now you feel empowered to do whatever it is you are here on the planet to do. And that right there is the key. And that is how we will change the world and how we are changing the world. And you have chosen, um, and I've, I've spoken to you about this so many times, but it just, it, it's not going to get old for me. You and your, you know, your generation, not to kick a, you know, a dead horse here, um, understand multimedia. You guys understand uh, the art of not only creating a video or a podcast or taking advantage of the internet or or a blog. You know, it, it, you guys, you guys fully get that, and you have chosen to take that approach. Of and you've just written, you know, your first book too as well. So you've got this multi pronged approach to getting the message out. And I yes. have, uh, you know, so was that a conscious decision In, instead of focusing in one area and putting all of your efforts there, you, you do a little bit of everything. You do online uh, conferences, uh, you've got your webinars, you speak publicly, you travel, you're creating videos, the YouTube uh, stillness, you're writing, but uh, you know, it's, it's a lot. Uh, why do, why do it all instead of just one thing? That's a great question. And you have to be versatile. That is so true. Because when I finished writing What is Magic a couple years ago, I was just a child. Like looking back to me two years ago, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I, I had written this book about metaphysical experiences. And then I thought, how the heck am I supposed to get this out into the world? I don't know if anyone even cares what I have to say, right? So you have to think about it from a marketing and advertising standpoint. And I thought, Okay, I need to figure out what I need to do next. So I meditated for a whole week. And what I was hearing was start a YouTube channel. And I thought that was really stupid, Jimmy, when I first heard that. I was like, surely I'm not hearing this as a message. But neither here nor there. Finally, after hearing this enough, I said, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to start a YouTube channel. And when I started the YouTube channel, I was working really hard to produce this really great, well-produced content. And it wasn't enough. You can't just start a YouTube channel. You have to hit it from all ends. So I started doing everything I could. I opened up my social media publicly. I started posting every day. I started a website. I started posting articles. I started going to conferences to meet people and network and help other people with their projects. And then it just starts to expand. You start to meet people that are like you, that are interested in the same things, that have the same mission. And now you sync up with those people and you start to expand. And you have to hit it from all ends. In my opinion, that's what's worked for me. And it's still a uh, it's, it's an everyday process and it's not easy, but it's worth it. Because when you're driven to get your message out, when you're connected to your soul purpose, you have these tools available to you and you want to use them. You want to access them. And what we've created here is just a wonderful network. I mean, on Stellar is amazing and other social media and then just all of us networking. It's it's great to have these opportunities and you have to broker relationships and do your own path and then help other people along their path too. And it can really help you expand your message. So by, by the time I was ready to actually release my book and publish it on Amazon, I had a following. I had people that cared. I had people coming to Conscious Life Expo to see my, me speak. And then I was able to talk to them and sell my book there. So it was a, a long journey and a long process, but I did it myself and I worked really hard to sell my book and get my message out and and it's just expanding from there the uh the other part of that is though it's not easy uh well the the path is never easy 
But when you're dealing with social media, you know, Facebook and Twitter and, and YouTube and, and your blog and stillness and your website and uh, you've also got to be uh, become an audio expert. You have to create your artwork. You've got to know how to shoot a good video. Now you've got to edit. It is a crazy amount of work throughout the day. It, it's not an easy process. And people think, ah, ah, let's just go start a YouTube channel. It'll be fun. It, it's not about that, is it? You've got to really become uh, uh, an expert at all of these platforms. Yeah, I'm a one-stop shop, and my friends call me a machine because they see me working on the computer, and you're jumping around from Photoshop to all kinds of different programs. To And, you know, I'm pretty techy. I went to school for journalism, so uh, since I was younger, and I ran a website when I was 11, too. I started a Harry Potter website. That's a fun fact about me. But uh, So I've always been into web development, and then I, after college, I went into technical editing. I worked in software development, so I was already there. And so when, by the time I shifted into starting my own business, luckily I already knew how to edit video. I knew how to shoot video. I knew how to, you know, edit images and things like that. But man, I'll tell you, I have learned so much over the last couple of years because man, you're totally right, right, Jimmy. It is, it is a crazy amount of work that goes into doing what we do. And, you know, for, for some people that don't understand and then you kind of give them a little bit of a window into what your day looks like, you're like, oh, wow, you're working, you know basically on average 10 hours a day with no days off and, and, but you do it because you love what you do. You, I'm living my dream right now, so I wouldn't have it any, uh, any other way, but the reality is it is a lot of work. The other, the other part of it is, uh, to develop the, uh, relationship with those that are following you and you've got to take care of your online, uh, version of yourself because you're always defending yourself. So you have to do that. And you are dealing, you're now a PR person too as well because of what the internet has turned into. It's not just simply uh, spreading the message, but it's also uh, uh, being a PR person and protecting yourself, which is, is it's turned into a full-time job as well for anybody. Absolutely. You have to make public statements uh, and then engaging with your community. It's so important. You know, I have a Facebook group and I engage there and I engage as much as I can. You know, I do receive a lot of emails. I do the best that I can there. And then I, I post on social media and I invite the community to, you know, tag their businesses in posts that I release on my public page. Um, I'm actually working on a project right now that I'm super excited about that involves musicians and artists. So I'm calling out to musicians and artists who have original work that they would like featured. And I'm going to be putting together a com compilation video that's going to feature these uh, professionals. So I do what I can to really create and nurture an environment, which I know you do very well with your fader knots. Uh, shout out to my fader knots. Love you guys. You know, we've been a crew for a really long time now. So Yes. I mean, there, it is a full-time job. You are a one-stop shop and you play multiple roles. And uh, it's fun because when you don't know, you know, you're traversing uncharted territory, you're going to be learning a lot as you make mistakes and you just do the best you can. I try to be as authentic as I can. So I have nothing to hide. You don't have anything to hide when you're being authentic and you just speak your truth. You try to stay as close as you can to logic and reason while also allowing your emotions to flow through through and that somehow has worked for me you know I've gone through uh some things like especially in the last couple of weeks that's been kind of hard but I've stayed true to myself throughout the whole thing being completely honest publicly you know I did a live stream last Friday that has you know over 15,000 views because I just hit record and started speaking my truth and people were watching from all over the world and I knew that I needed to do that at that moment so many people were asking me questions so yeah i mean when you're a public person sometimes it's easier just to make a public statement than to have to respond to hundreds of emails <laughs> right right and have you started to see a change in in those that follow you are you are you starting to get that positive feedback 
I get a ton of positive feedback and I would say that the majority of the feedback that I get is positive. And at these times of crisis, uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily call it a crisis, but it was uh, kind of a mess and we'll get into all of what happened. You know, it was very intense. Uh, you do see a rallying of support, which is amazing. Like I totally love my divines. There are so many people that I have met over the last few years that I just do, don't know what I'd do without. And I know you probably feel the same way of about, you know, the people that follow you and listen to you on Jimmy Church Radio. And it's it has been an amazing ride. And I have felt fully supported. And when you do have naysayers, it just, for me, the way I look at it is it provides me an avenue, a platform, and an opportunity to speak to larger issues. I always try to look at the big picture and uh, try to cut out some of that negativity. It is hard, though. I'll be completely honest with you, Jamie, especially being a woman, and I'm not trying to play the woman card, but there it is. I get a lot of um, you know, negative comments daily on my YouTube channel and things like that, but you just have to let those go. You got to let them go and realize that you, there there's a resounding positive message being given to you and you are supported and all of that. So I, I do remember that, and I try to hold space for that and um, and give myself the credibility and then just kind of move forward with as much of a positive attitude as I can. Some days, you know, I would say maybe once a month, it becomes a little crushing. But other than that, uh, I would say that I generally have a positive outlook, as you know about me, because you know me personally, I, I am generally a, a very positive person. Well, let's take a break right here and we'll pick up when we come back and we're going to discuss uh, with everybody this uh, this crazy uh, week or two of yours and well and the rest of our community was certainly along for the ride. Our guest tonight, Teresa Yanaris. This is Fade to Black. I'm yours, Jimmy Church. More Teresa right out of this short break. Stay with us. Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Does your basement or crawl space have a damp, musty smell? Well, watch out. That's a sign of too much moisture and not enough ventilation. And that can mean increased mold growth and the buildup of harmful toxins and gases. Don't bother with a dehumidifier. It just circulates the same unhealthy air. Now there's a better way to remove these dangers and odors. It's with the computerized Wave Moisture Control Unit that reduces moisture and expels pollutants. We replaced our old dehumidifier with the Wave Unit, and in only three weeks, our basement is dry and the musty smell is gone. Wave units require no maintenance, no buckets of water or filters, and costs only pennies a day to run. Breathe better, live healthier with an affordable, no maintenance Wave unit. Call 888-717-WAVE 888-717-WAVE or visit dryhealthyhome.com dryhealthyhome.com Ride the wave Wave Home Solutions for a healthy, comfortable home Hi, this is Ray Sobs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. Well, the <laughs> <laughs> We are of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. Ancient Life Oil. Life changing. The real oil. CBD is truly ancient life oil from the source. This oil has no psychoactive effect and is also legal in all 50 states. When you're healthy, you're happy. The truth about this wonderful plant is that it wants to give back to mankind life, longevity, and happiness. Ancient life oil are golden grade, all organic, non GMO, and infused with high quality liquid coconut oil. It's simple. Just go to ancient. Ancientlifeoil.com today. 
That's ancientlifeoil.com. The best, purest, organic, and non-GMO CBD in the world. Go back, Lee Tappy. The statements made regarding these products have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Please consult your healthcare professional about potential interactions or other possible complications before using any product. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Teresa Yanaris. And tomorrow night, Linda Moulton Howe is going to be here. Wednesday night, George Nori and Victoria Gavarian are going to be here. Special guests, too, will be with us on Wednesday night. Thursday night, John Rappaport and Fader Night and Open Lines all night long. Back to Teresa. Okay, now, so Teresa... Uh, let's start here. Yeah, what's up? What's up? Let's start here. Let's go back. Um, you started to tell me last week. Now, I read about this, and I saw the post, and I saw that. But, but you personally told me about the dream. So let's actually go back, because it seems that this may have and we're going to try to clear this up tonight, uh, have kicked all of this off. I'm not so sure what is going on. Um, and so I want a timeline here. Uh, you had a dream. Yes. What was the dream? And when was it? The dream was the night of May 1st, and I published it on May 2nd. And let me just back up really quick before I tell about the dream, because this is not the first time that I've had really intense dreams vivid, intense experiences, downloads of information, channeling, all this kind of stuff. I'm actually working on a book on this now, uh, especially in the last year. This is kind of when the ET contact started for me. And we've talked about this on your radio show before. I've talked about after contact in the desert last year, being visited by the blue gray aliens who took me out of my room. I didn't know if this was a dream or not. Normally I can tell if it's a dream or not, but there was physical evidence that suggested that this actually occurred. The next day I felt like I had been drugged. I was cooking breakfast and there was blood running down the back of my leg. I have a new spot on the back of my knee. My family member had been contacted two days later and he didn't know anything about what I had experienced. Uh, Also that night, the person in the house with me had a shared dream. So those were three physical uh, pieces of evidence that led me to believe that maybe there was something going on. From then, from that point forward, things have just continued to get weirder for me. So that's just a little bit of a background that we can break down more, but we can fast forward now and I can preface, I, I preface that. So now we can launch into the dream. The dream happened on the night of May 1st. And what I also need to mention is that I do meditate frequently. I meditate as much as I can almost every day. So, and I have experience teaching meditation, astral projection, those types of things. And this particular night I was falling asleep and I was in that space in between right before you fall asleep when you're getting those like images flashing before your eyes and you're going into that deep theta, but you're still conscious. You know what I'm talking about, Jimmy? I do. Okay. So that was the space that I was in and, uh, I will go right into it now. So I walk out of my bedroom at my childhood home. And as soon as I step out of my bedroom, there's a woman who just finished walking up the stairs. So it was like on the second floor. She had just finished walking up the stairs and she turns and she faces me. So it was as though she was trying to time her walking up the stairs with me walking out of my room. And she squared her shoulders off to me, almost as though like she knew I was going to be coming out of my room at that moment. And she had this like sense of urgency about her. And the energy that was coming off of her was like really bright light energy emanating from her. She was a little bit taller than me. I'm five, five. She was maybe five, seven, five, eight. And she was just so light and happy and had this like just happiness and joy exuding from her. And 
it almost felt like I was greeting an old friend, but like I had amnesia. So like if you were to see someone that you were really close to, but you have amnesia, you'd be able to tell on their face that they're recognizing you, that they're having some kind of memory about you. That's how I felt with this woman. I could see on her face, she was having some kind of recollection about me, but I was, I I didn't remember her. So then she spoke to me and she said, everything your people said would happen is now coming to fruition. And when she said that, I started thinking about the event, like in, in this dream, in this experience, it was the event was happening. And all of a sudden I started thinking about my family members and how they were involved. And this was related specifically to like a catastrophically disruptive event that was happening on the planet. So I started thinking about all this other stuff. So I was sort of distracted. And then she interrupted me and she said, I'm here to take you with me to the inner earth. And when she said that, I was completely shocked because I did not expect, obviously, anything like that to come out of her mouth. And so I'm just standing there looking at her in shock. And then she said, you can come with me, but you'll never be able to see your family again. We don't have much time. We're going to have to leave in half an hour. And that should be enough time for you to gather your things. And she says this to me, and there's like a moment of silence that's hanging there in the air. And before I can even think anything, she says, will you come with me? And when she said, will you come with me? I could hear this hopeful tone in her voice. Like she was hoping that I was going to come with her and I could see it in her eyes. And I didn't have a whole lot of time to think. And so I, I just answered. I said, yes, of course, I will come with you. And so before I can say anything else or anything else happens, she just turns around, she walks down the stairs. And then I have this sense of urgency now because she gave me a timeline. So I turn back around, I run through the open door to my room, I throw the suitcase on the floor, and I start throwing things in the suitcase. I have no idea what I'm doing at this point. And I'm thinking like, what does one bring to the inner earth? I don't, I have no idea what I'm supposed to pack in this bag. And when I had that thought, all of a sudden my hands and I can see my hands they're hovering over my bag and they're sort of shaking. And I realized, wait a second, what am I doing? Like, I can't, I can't leave. Can I? And I just, I was overcome with sadness as I was thinking about my family that I was going to be leaving and I didn't know what to do. And after this, I was thinking about my father and my brother and my family and just how they must be involved in all of this. And I was seeing images of the event happening and there were certain roles that I knew all of us had to play. So what was important about this moment of contemplation in my dream was that I was thinking about all of the secrets and all of the things that, you know, you and I talk about on the radio and what we do with our lives. And we try to tell the world about, and just the realization that everybody was realizing that we had been off planet for quite some time and beings beyond our realm of experience had been here for much longer than most people could fathom. Everything was coming out into the open and the price of that truth brought so much more than any of us could have anticipated. So my eyes blur with tears. I'm freaking out. I knew that I had to do my part. So there was this, this level of, uh, duty welling up in me where it was like, whatever this is that I have to do, I have to do it. And I can't be scared. I have to lean in and I have to walk the narrow path, whatever that was. And after that, I woke up. So that was the dream. That's step one. I'm listening. You can't stop. Don't don't even think about stopping. Okay. All right. (laughs) I'm on the edge of my seat. Okay. Well, hold on. A couple of uh, questions uh, just for clarification here. Yeah. You said that you saw the roles for yourself and everybody else. What did you mean by that? That's a great question. So I specifically saw certain members of my family playing certain roles. And I don't want to be too specific because I want to be you know, I am a public person. I want to be careful about what I'm disclosing, but I saw some specific roles of people in my immediate family specifically related to, um, going off planet and, um, basically helping to protect humans. So there, there is a thread that I believe that my family has a connection to this role for generations upon generations. So I don't think that this is like, 
just abnormal. I, I don't think it's a, a surprise or a coincidence that I am living the life that I'm living now, if that makes sense. You know, I was, if that makes sense. Well, then you said, you know, you, you know, tears, right? And, and it sounded like to me, I just want clarification here, that you didn't want to go. That your job was here on the surface, and there was too, you know, too many other things to do, like hang out on fade to black, right? <laughs> you can't do that from the inner earth. But is that what you're? Is that what you are are trying to say? Yeah. So that's a great question because the net when I woke up, so I got up the next day, and I'm telling you, Jimmy, like this threw me off. I was in a weird place after this because I was warring with that inside me myself. I was thinking like, well did I choose to go to the inner earth? Did I actually in the dream choose to go or did I not? Because, and then the people I started telling about it, we're having the same conversation you and I are having now, where it's like, what was the decision that was made? So I didn't quite understand where I was at in the dream because it kind of leaves you hanging, right? It's like, I say yes, I go back to the suitcase, but then I'm going, ah, and I'm having this war within myself. So what I did was, after like three or four hours of working, finally, I just said, I can't work anymore. I need to go into a meditative state. I need to try to get to the bottom of this. I need to go within. I need to understand and distill what it is that I'm supposed to distill from this experience because it takes time to process. Every experience we have on this planet, you can't just figure out the answers. Boom, you have the answers. You have to do uh, your due diligence to contemplate what's going on so okay now what wait 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 pump the brakes there kid pump the brakes (laughs) um had you before this dream pondered or cared about or thought about the inner earth was it part of of something that you considered that you know that it was there that there's an existence or was this just completely out of the blue well, of course, Corey Good talks about the inner earth. He talks about his experiences with the inner earth. So that's, that's Corey. There. That's but, Corey. I'm talking about you. Well, and I'm I'm explaining uh, like I guess my exposure to it. Well, okay. that, 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 ah, that's, that's the that's the correct answer. Okay, I, I I totally get that. But I mean, I'm I'm let's go back ten years before Corey. You know, had you ever considered any of this before? I have never really thought that deeply about the inner earth, to be completely honest. That's right. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't something that I was deeply researching. I wasn't, oh, I'd love to go to the inner earth. That was never on my mind. Right, exactly. So what would cause this dream? That's when you go into this meditation. Right, because... It, it really, it came out of the blue. It came completely out of the blue to answer your question directly. Because when I'm in this dream, this woman says, I'm here to take you to the inner earth. I was like, just completely like, it was 100% cognitive dissonance. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like I had just finished watching a movie on the inner earth. And then I go to sleep and I have a dream about a woman <laughs> asking me to go to the inner earth. It was nothing like that at all. <laughs> That's exact. <laughs> Now you've answered the question, (laughs) you know, and, and so there's some significance here. Okay. So you go into the meditation. If you want to discuss that, that's fine. But you come out of the meditation and you, you put everything down. You put the words down, you get the thought out, you remember, and you write your article, right? Right. And what w- the reason why I think it's important to mention the meditation is because there is something significant here, because I talked for a second about my experience with the Blue Grays from June of 2017. And they actually took me onto their ship and they showed me how to telepathically communicate. They showed me a, a technique for this. And during this meditation, I this was the first time that I actually used or tried to apply this technique that I had learned. And I was actually able to create in my mind, what felt like a telepathic link to this woman specifically. And it was like, I could sense her energy and we were connected. Our minds were connected. And I sit in this space of connection with her and I start asking her questions and we're kind of downloading each other. 
with thoughts. And she explains to me that I had already made the decision on whether or not I was going to go. And then I, I needed to understand why I made the decision that I had already made, which really was weird because it reminded me of the words spoken by the Oracle in the movie, the matrix. And I could feel her in my thoughts. And what was very important about this meditation is that she projected this idea that in the dream, I was given the opportunity to explore the concept of personal will and choice and to build a case for my feelings about this dilemma of discernment of, you know, should I go or not when I don't know what's going to happen? How can you make a choice to leave your entire family behind based strictly off of someone saying, hey, do you want to come to the inner earth? Because to me, that felt like giving up personal sovereignty, right? right? So I knew that there was this whole aspect of soul path, you know, and needing to step into your soul path. But for me, it was like, in order to make a decision like that, I'm going to have to know the risks involved. I, there's no way that I can make a decision like that if I don't fully know what's going to be going on, if that makes sense. It so, does. It does make sense. Oh, continue. Continue. Okay. So then, and I'll jump, jump forward now. So I finished this meditation and then I immediately published the dream. So it was like, as soon as I finished this meditation, I knew that I needed to get this out there. And what's important about this, Jimmy, is that I've been having these very crazy experiences over the last year of my life that I have not published because I've been, I've been writing them in a book and I've been planning on publishing them in a book. But for some reason, this was such a such an important experience. I did. I couldn't really explain why I knew I needed to publish it because it was so personal. Normally I wouldn't publish something like this, but I did it anyway. And I went onto my blog and I typed it up and I hit the publish button and I shared it on social media. And what happened next was incredible because people started getting like so interested in what was going on. People were having their own downloads and their own experiences. People were crying. People were sending me emails. It was like the internet had exploded because of this article and people were starting to ask themselves like, well, would I go to the inner earth? And then some people were scared that I was going to go to the inner earth. So now they're saying, Teresa, don't go. It's a trap. It's the negative entities trying to get you to come to the inner earth. And it was just all over the place. Do you think that the reactions were because it was happening simultaneously to the masses or that they were resonating with your words? I think people were deeply resonating with the this concept, like they were able to go in and read this article and kind of put themselves in my shoes. And then they're thinking about how they would respond in the same way. And, and what this this does is it makes you think about how much you care about your family and how much you really need to be here on the planet. It, it was like it created this beautiful platform to make people really take their lives seriously for a second and appreciate, wow, I have this opportunity here on the planet to do what I need to do. And I have these wonderful people around me. And it was like people were having that moment of appreciation for their own soul path, if that makes sense. That's what I think. Now, what happened next? Okay, so that was May 2nd that I published that article. Two days later, resi alleged resistance Intel operative Cobra, who is a person who blogs online. I don't know all that much about him because I don't really follow him, but he published an article on May 4th called Firing the Grid. And this article says that people will be communicated and be communicated with and be activated by uh, the Pleiadian fleet. Uh, people will start being spiritually and energetically activated. And this activation could include visions, lucid dreams, uh, kundalini awakenings, rapid transformation of belief systems. And then he goes on to say, if you're experiencing such an activation, stay calm and do not act impulsively, especially in your close personal relationships. So he publishes this article and I didn't know he published the article because I don't follow him, but people started sending me this article and people started making public statements saying, Oh, Teresa is having an activation such that Cobra describes. And so because of the synchronicities related to my dream experience, and especially because I was really trying to, it came down to assessing your personal relationships, right? That was a huge aspect of my dream uh, and the vision that I had subsequent, fo subsequently following the dream. So there were some synchronicities there. Did Cobra mention you in this article? He did not mention me in this article published on May 4th, no. Okay. Has he mentioned you since then? He has. 
Okay. So now, the next I thing have, that happened. Let me jump back because I want to address exactly uh, this timetable here. Because my okay. inbox got slammed. Of course, I called you, right? Okay. So, anyway, I, you know, I'm getting slammed with this, and people were asking me if I had been receiving this activation, that if I've gotten the invitation. Um, and I needed to get Cobra and you on the show. Were there things in the Cobra uh, announcement that only you knew? In, in other words, uh, was there was Cobra's announcement independent of your article, or do you think that they were related, that Cobra's announcement wouldn't have happened if you didn't post your dream? Okay, so- so, well, and I don't really know much about Cobra, but I will say, let's say that Cobra is receiving communications from some kind of resistance uh, group. And let's say that they told him that some people were going to be activated to prepare the surface population for some of them potentially going to the inner earth. Let's just say that that's true. So if that is true, and they told him not to disclose that to the public until the public was ready... And then I released this dream as an article, and now it's out there in the public eye. Maybe then he's contacted by the resistance, and they say, okay, now that this is out in the collective consciousness and people are talking about it, this is a good time to go ahead and release uh, the protocols that he released later, which we haven't talked about yet. But that's one uh, theory that could be the case. Another theory could be that he just, you know, saw what I posted and then made something up. But I don't know. I, I I can't say which is which, but if he is being contacted, then that could be uh, a reason why he waited until I had published that article. If, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. Um, you know, I know that he's got a certain following that is out there. Okay, I get that. And I get the emails every single day about Cobra. And I, I, I get that too. And And those out there listening, they know who has spoken to me, all right? So there's no question about that. But the timing of it feels a little bit suspect to me. I need need more to think that, uh, to feel like there's something here. And I'm I'm being kind right now. I'm not saying what I really want to say. So let's let's now let, let's move forward. What happened next? Okay. So then after that I published an article the next day and I described the synchronicities between his article Firing the Grid and my dream. So that's not, not really all that important. What happened next that was really interesting was that on May 9th, which was 4 days later, he published an article called Entry Protocols. Now, in this article, he does call me out. So this happened seven days after I published my dream. He comes out with an article called Entry Protocols, and he says that verbatim, recent prophetic dream of Teresa Anaris is a direct result of this awakening sequence and requires a detailed analysis. And he links to my article, and he explains the state that my dream was taking place in. And what he says next was the dream was induced as a signal for the surface population to start preparing for the contact and reveals a large part of entry protocols. He goes on to explain uh, that people who will be, I guess, selected to go to the inner earth will be approached by a resistance person, asked if they want to go, then they basically have to pack their things really quickly, and then they go into the inner earth, and, you know, it goes on and so forth from there. But there were obviously a lot of synchronicities. Um, What I thought was interesting, though, is that he stated that my dream was induced as a signal for the surface population. So that to me, and this was something I was already thinking, if this was legit, if it was legitimately a message for me, then I would think it would be because I am media and I'm able to channel. And so getting that information out to the masses so that other people have access to that information, maybe that was the role that I was to play. If this is legit, not necessarily that I would even be asked to go to the inner earth or that it would even be on the table. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. And when we come back after the break, I want to get uh, more in depth into what this invitation is and what it involves and its implications, not only for the individual, 
uh, where this invitation lies out, but of course, friends and family. Uh, and and what are uh, you know what are the real dangers of of this? Uh, so, so we're going to do all of that when we come back, and also, uh, and I think it's very important to uh, to address. And I need to ask you some you know the tough questions. Was it just a dream? Was it just a dream? Was it just something cool that happened? You know, all of these things. I want to know how you feel about it now, and we'll. Uh, take care of all of this with uh, Teresa and Aris when we come back. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Man, what a night on the show. Teresa, you're amazing. Give us two minutes. We'll be right back and we'll pick up where we left off. This is Fade to Black. Stay with us. here we listen to jimmy church you're listening to fade to black always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk jimmy church with fade to black kgra radio.com Hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires. This year we've experienced more than our fair share. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. And last month I decided to make sure my family does not have to worry about food should we get caught in a real emergency situation. Introducing Numana, a healthy, storable product that tastes so good that you'll want to eat it every day instead of just during those times of duress. All new mana products have a 25-year shelf life, are MSG and GMO-free, no preservatives, and are made in America. With the new mana pack in your home, you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that you've protected your family. Not only have I tasted and tested, I own it. Now you can too. Just click on the new mana banner on JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code Jimmy when you order. In addition to a discount, we'll send you an autographed Fade to Black t-shirt. Seriously. Go back, Lee Tappy. Do you worry a lot whether you're a college student, busy professional, parent, or grandparent? Ongoing stress and elevated levels of the stress hormone cortisol can rob your memory, your health, and your future. Now you can combat the effects of stress and anxiety while improving your memory and recall at the same time with the dietary supplement Calm and Clever. Studies show that the ingredients in Calm and Clever reduce cortisol by as much as 30% in one to two weeks. Call 1-800-758-8746 or calmandclever.com. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. (laughs) KGRARadio.com Hi, folks. What can I say without making claims? CBD is truly the buzzword for health. What does it do? Government institutions will not allow me to say what this wonderful oil does for us. But I can say it's non-GMO and organic. I can say it's .003 THC, which in plain English means you won't get high. There are those that want to squash your freedom to buy natural products. Fight back with your purchase power. In the end, it is you that takes care of your health. Go to ancientlifeoil.com. One more time, ancientlifeoil.com. You are listening to Fate to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is revolution. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your Zumi Church tonight. Teresa Yanaris is with us. 
And we're discussing the dream and Cobra, amongst other things. I did want to say, I'm going to give a shout out right now to Dot. Dot sent me an email during the break, popped in, and it's a really cool email. So Dot, there's your shout out. Thank you for the email. All right. I just, uh, oh, did I reply? Yeah, she just got the reply right now. So there you go. Um uh, Teresa, I'm going to take a second here. I, I need to hold up uh, um, Ack Ack to the camera. This was sent to me from Samuel Smith. He made this, and uh, it's one of the Martians from Mars Attacks, and this is handmade, and I'm holding it up to the camera. It is such an incredible piece of artwork, uh, this sculpture. It's incredible, but I want to get it really close. you got to see these eyes. Look at the look at. Can you guys see that? These eyeballs are the real deal. There's Ack Ack. Thank you, Samuel. Uh, this is uh, really, really cool. And it's going to stay here in the bunker forever. Okay, Teresa, back uh, back to the dream first before we move on. Could it have been just a cool dream? There's always that possibility, Jimmy, of course, and I have a dedication to the truth and I will be the first one to be authentic and say, sure, why not? Why, why not? Maybe it was just a dream, but I will also say that because of the story that comes preceding the dream, that's what makes it significant to me. All the stuff that happened after, you know, with Cobra and everything else Looking back, you know, today's the 21st. This happened, you know, on the 1st of May. It still resonates with me and it's still an important part of my experience. And I have had increasingly significant uh, experiences over the last year. And what's crazy is that I was starting to put this into a presentation and I'm going to be talking about this at the SETI conference and Dimensions of Disclosure about my ET contact experiences. So it does have an air of significance to me. Also, I wanted to shout out to Sarah from the Sandbox. She made a connection that I think is important for us to notice because she said that it was interesting, it might be interesting that the dream happened on May 1st, which is Beltane, which is an ancient Celtic festival celebrated on May Day. And that's very interesting because I do have Celtic roots. I was actually born on August 1st, which is Lamas Day, which is the celebration of the harvest. And my name, Teresa, actually means harvester. And, you know, my parents are Catholic, so there was no connection there. But I think that there are significant things that can happen. And we also, we create significance in our lives when you are looking to fill your experience out with richness, then that's what it's all about, baby. That's my perspective. And I'm going to take that, uh, that dream. I'm going to use that as a pool and a platform to speak to bigger issues, which is exactly what I did after, you know, all of this was said and done. I made a public statement where I was able to speak to the larger things like, uh, you know, soul purpose and everyone having a path. And, you know, people were getting triggered because they thought, oh, well, uh, I want to go to the inner earth. I want to leave the earth and, and go to the inner earth and not be on the surface anymore. And I, it gave me a platform to speak about escapism. So there, when you ask, you know, maybe it was just a dream. The answer to that is just a dream. Uh, no, because I was able to take that and I was able to speak to thousands of people about personal sovereignty and their duty to their mission. And I say that that is highly significant. Now, then there's the other part, though, and I understand the sovereignty part, but choosing to walk away from this family, children, friends, I find that a bit strange. And the reason why I do, I think it's asking... If you are some ambassador from the inner earth coming up and plucking those from here to go there to walk away, I'm, I'm, I, I don't understand that part of the message. How can that possibly be cool or the correct thing to do? 
Right. And that's why I don't really think like, let's just say for a second that this is all true. Then I don't think I was actually asked to join the inner earth because my connections on the surface are so strong. Like I'm obviously going to stay here. I'm not going anywhere. If that were an option for me, I wouldn't take it. Why? Because my mission is here on the surface, you know? So asking me would be not really a good thing to do. I mean, it'd be obvious that I'm going to be like, sorry, I have so much going on that I'm doing, but I think that if this is real and some people would be asked, it would be the people who would be asked, this would be their purpose. So it would be, they would accept it because maybe they don't have ties on the planet to a whole lot of people. So they're able to, in good conscience, move forward with this path that is aligned with them. Uh, when I talked to James Gilliland about this, cause I called him up on the phone. I said, Hey buddy, I know you know about the inner earth. You got to talk to me here. He said that, some people on the surface might actually their their true soul family might actually be there in the inner earth. So those on the surface who would go to the inner earth, it would be because they would be leaving the surface to go connect with their actual soul family. Are these invitations going to happen in real life? I mean, not in a dream, not in some astral, not some out of body, but where these inner earth beings would show up on the surface in physical form and then invite is that am i understanding this correctly yes so what according to cobra this would be happening in the physical people would be approached and he said that uh, he actually had to post an update because he triggered so many people with the original post that because it was so it was kind of vague and so he came in and came in and said okay let me make some clarifications here but it, it's not like a mass recruit where everyone's going to be asked. It's going to be only like, according to him, between 20 and 200 people. So, and yes, it would happen on the physical and they would go with a person into the inner earth. Now, I, I still think that would be crazy. I, I that's just me. Like I, when I started thinking about this, when it first came out, I'm like, oh no, like this is kind of scary because you might have just mass murderers walking up to random people saying, hey, do you want to join the resistance? And so, yeah, there's an element of danger here where you might have people that are suffering from some form of escapism and now they they want to leave their, their lives and now they're going to go put themselves in danger because of it. So, you know, there's that. Has anybody disappeared yet? <laughs> I don't know. What was the uh, what was the what was that series, Rita? What was the series that what was it called? Oh man! Uh, okay, we watched this series. I can't remember what uh, what it was on. If it was Amazon or Sci Fi, it doesn't matter. Where everybody disappeared one day, you know, millions around the earth, they just pfft, right. Everybody was gone, and you know, children, you know, wives, you know, husbands, you know, people just disappeared, and they were taken someplace else. And that, if what we're talking about here with Cobra, which almost it's got some kind of religious feels to it, but if if this thing that cobra is talking about where suddenly 200 people disappeared and were, are they supposed to tell people that they are leaving and going to the inner earth and they've they're going to leave a you know messages with family and loved ones or are they just going to disappear and we got to figure this out on our own the 4400 that's what it was called the 4400 okay was that it I can't remember, but uh, that doesn't matter. Um, the leftovers? Yeah, yeah the leftovers, Google, yeah. the leftovers, the leftovers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, that's, <laughs> so we would be like the leftovers, right? <laughs> oh, my God, that's so funny. Yeah, and I think that that's sort of what people were getting. The, people were just like on the surface level thinking that. If you think about it, it's like, uh, okay, so you're going to have some people that are so awakened and enlightened that they're going to get this opportunity to go to the inner earth and everybody else that isn't going to get to go. Now they get to cry in their, their Cheerios because they weren't invited to go to the inner earth, you know? And so that needed to be spoken to where it's like, mm, if this is even the thing, then I would, my argument on my live stream was that, there are so many different missions that we have that Cobra, if this is real, he was just speaking to one, right? Then you have 
hundreds of thousands of other missions that people are going to be called to do in this event. So this is just speaking to one thing, you know, and this is a this is a straw man that happens a lot, you know, and as a public speaker, people do this all the time. You see it happen where just because you're speaking to one thing doesn't mean you're not you're negating all the rest. So it's an important conversation to have. It's not, it wouldn't be like the leftovers. It would be like some people are going to the inner earth. Other people are not because they're doing other things that are equally as important. The Leftovers, that's with uh, Justin Thoreau. Do, do you remember, um, it was a great series, do you remember Zoolander? Yes. Okay, you remember the DJ with the dreadlocks? <laughs> do you remember sure. the DJ? It's a walk-off. Remember with uh, David oh, Bowie? Yes. Okay, the, the DJ with the dreadlocks, it's a walk-off. That's the DJ in Zoolander is Justin Thoreau, who is the star of uh, The Leftovers. And it's just really, really, it's just a, a very uh, versatile actor and, and a very, uh, very cool guy. But anyway, it's a walk off. Um, yeah, The Leftovers. So are we in danger here of, one, listening to somebody like Cobra that makes predictions like this? that we've heard over and over and over again throughout history, different, I'm not going to say that Cobra is a prophet, but you have these predictions. You have these prophetizing statements that talk about, uh, you know, these these dates and these significant things, and they never come to pass, right? What's in, Right. Well, and what's interesting about that, Jimmy, is that, This was a very interesting thing to happen online because what happened was Cobra's world and the Divine Frequency world collided, right? And so what you see now is what happens after Cobra and Teresa collide, right? That his world, he's over in his world doing his thing. I'm over in my world doing my thing. And then here it is. The Internet's a beautiful place. We have this crossover now. And then we're like, okay, now how do we deal with this? For me in my world and what I teach and I actively pursue across the nation to share with people my message, who I am, is about the now. It's about personal empowerment in the now. It's about taking your life seriously in the present. And I tend to be one of those kind of practical people that, yeah, I can go out here and I can talk in woo-woo land, but then I'm going to bring it back down to earth and go, how can I actually use this in my life right now? So I am not that, uh, I'm not a person that makes uh, claims for the future and prophecies and things like that. Like that's, that's not my um, shtick, right? That's not who I am. That's some other people do that, but I don't. So it was interesting to have Cobra's world kind of come over into my, into mine. And then I thought it was such a beautiful, uh, collision because it allowed me to go, Hey, this is great. Now I can meet some new people. I met a lot of uh, people that like Cobra and they're like really cool people. So I've made a lot of new friends over the last few weeks. Shout out to you guys. You guys are awesome. I know you guys are listening right now. And, uh, through that, I was able to speak my message to, more people. So it was, I think it was a beautiful thing. Cobra, is he rolling the dice a little bit too hard here? (laughs) What do you mean? If you've got to be right in in, in something like this, you can't be wrong. Then you have to go back and you have to adjust. You have to go back and say, well, it's not going to be now. It's going to be next year. It's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be like I said with the inner earth. It's, you know, you've got to go back and make corrections and, and modify and clarify you're rolling the dice if it doesn't happen right and he did in his uh entry protocols update article that he released on may 14th where he kind of clarified some points that he had made of he did course say- he did <laughs> of course he did okay i'm sorry Teresa. go ahead what did he say on the 14th well he was basically saying that because of the uh uproar over the internet that it probably showed that people weren't ready so that it might and i'm i don't want to put words in his mouth because i i am a journalist and i like to quote things directly okay it says banana comments that have mushroomed over the internet in the last few days are proof that most of the surface population is not ready for contact so do not complain if there are delays in the future uh ray posted and i know that you saw this but let's let's get this out here i, I think it's great he said okay a question a statement for Teresa." How can she refuse the inner earth offer? The answer lies beyond the physical realm and should not be entangled in emotional memories. 
Not an easy task. Right. Well, I mean, I my answer to that would be I would refuse if I wasn't given notice on exactly what that looked like. And this is what I, I keep kind of going back to, because if I don't know what's going to come and I just need to make a decision based off of like agreeing to let go of something that I already have, that to me shows that I'm not using my discernment. It's, I don't have enough information in order to make a well-rounded decision. Now, if there are, if I know what I'm getting myself into, I mean, there's always a level of mystery. You know, I'm the first to tell you that I am good at the leap of faith. But at the same time, making a decision like leaving everything behind to go do something and it's like you'll never see your family again and you don't know what you're going to do. That to me, like I, I couldn't make a decision like that. Now, but but if it was presented in a way where like I had assurances and I knew what was going to happen and there was some something that I could reconcile, then maybe I would consider something like that. But in my life now and the way that I mean, we're, we're totally just spitballing here, but I, I couldn't do it. You know, look, if somebody came to me. And you and Rita and I were out coffee right coffee and somebody comes up and says yo church uh we've selected you we need you to come to the inner earth and you need to not not rita and Teresa. they're not invited <laughs> now the first thing out of my mouth is i want to see some id right right okay i i I'm open to the idea, the theory, that there is an inner earth. I'm completely open to that. Uh, We've had too many cultures uh, over millennia talking about this very thing. Um, I could see that as being real. Now, I don't know if it's the descriptions that we've had. I don't know. I haven't been there, right? I don't know. I don't know anybody that has been there, well, aside from Corey. But what I mean is this. If somebody came up and, and really said that to me, I, I, you're not going to get an answer. I need some ID. <laughs> I need to know, uh, can I visit first? Show me the door. What's going on? I, I need all of that. And, and I'm not trying to... Uh, I'm not trying to downplay any of this, but if it really came down to it, I'm I'm going there. I want to see some ID, you know, and I don't think that's too much to ask at a moment like that. I think that most people would agree with you. I think most people do from the response that I was seeing. And honestly, so, I mean, there are so many people that have families. I mean, you know, it, it gave an opportunity for people to really, really appreciate what they have. And that's, that's why I think this was an interesting thing to happen because it makes you go, wow, I'm really glad that I get to wake up in the morning with my feet on the ground and live the life that I live and spend my time around people that I love and take care of them and nurture them. Uh, Rita said, if this ever happens, she's uh, pushing me through the door. I'm just letting you know right now. Oh, and by the <laughs> way, Rita said it, it. She said, I'm sounding really, really old. She goes, church, it's woke. The word is woke. But see, I, that's, I, I don't like, you know what bothers me when I see somebody at my age dressing like they're 21 or 18 and trying to talk cool? Ah, I'm, not, I'm not 21. So I said a woke. <laughs> if I said woke, I sound like what bothers me. So there you go. A woke. Do, you like this, do you know the song, though? Stay woke. Uh, no, I don't. All right, I'll send it to you. You got <laughs> to get hip, bro. That, that is too funny. That is too funny. Yeah, send it to me. I'd love <laughs> to hear it. Um, now, okay, what is the purpose of going to the inner earth and walking away from those that you love? What's the purpose of that? That's what I want to know, because if you can't really know what the purpose is, like, and so I've been racking my brain about that. I'm like... So what would you have to do in the inner earth that means that you could never come back ever to your family, right? And so I thought that maybe what would happen 
is that you're downloaded with some kind of like information that's just so much more than what we have access to now that it like completely changes the nature of all of your relationships so that you have this like kind of higher sense of purpose and now you're doing something that's like not I don't know like it's it's a really interesting thing to think about like what what could a higher purpose be that's not something that you could do on the surface of the planet does it mean that they have like amazing technology down there that's able to uh pump out some kind of positive energy that but why wouldn't you just use a machine you know like all of those questions why do they need to recruit people and it makes me think that if this were real, then it would be because there's like an aspect of their soul evolution that has to be played out in this other scenario. Well, and I think that is exactly the point. You know, is it that they want us to take our cell phones with us and we can, you know, can we periscope? Can we periscope from the <laughs> inner earth? You know, are, are we able to shoot video? Are we going to take pictures? Are we going to come back with some documentation? Is there some message that we're going to come back and relay to the surface? Or are we just gone? And more importantly, what's the food like? You know, right? I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just saying, do we have chilled vodka in the inner earth? And these are questions that, um, you know, Rita and I, we sit around and talk about this with you and others. You know, we like to speculate, you know, would we jump on, you know, would we jump on a ET craft and, and head to uh, Zeta Reticuli and, and leave this planet? Well, there's questions that I need answered first. I would love to be one of those guys, but I need to I need to know, you know, certain things. One, can I take Rita with me? That's first. I'm not going alone. She would she would love for to get rid of me. I get that. <laughs> but the other part is, you know, so many things. You know, what's life going to be like? Am I going to enjoy myself? Uh, what is, you know, I, I don't want to go to the inner earth for the rest of my life and eat bad food and have a bad experience and really uh, not enjoy it. So what's the purpose of going? I, I need to know all of these things, and I'm very unclear with it. I'm, I'm unclear. Well, and allegedly, I mean, I talked to James Gilliland from his SETI ranch out there in Washington, and he said that all of the creatures that we've ever known, like mermaids, most importantly, duh, hashtag mermaid life, apparently there are all of these beings in the inner earth. They have kept them. There are actually dinosaurs and fairies and mermaids and all kinds of beings in the inner earth. How cool would that be? I would love it. I just need the proof. I mean, it's, it's, it's all great. I am it's Shangri-La, right? Okay. All right. I just need something a little more tangible for me to make those decisions. And I just, uh, to say, and again, I don't want to sound negative, about this cobra message it just seems suspect and you really really something better happen that's all that's all something better happen or the the positivity the message that is out there is going to dwindle and it's going to go away and it's going to turn into something very very negative and that's the part that um, people want a reason to to believe and to have hope and and to uh, wonder and 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 all of those things. Well, if you're going to suggest this stuff, then it's got to actually happen. Or uh, in the end, it's going to turn out to be very negative. And I kind of feel it going that way now. Right. And he says that the people that would go to the inner earth would be able to come back after the event. So then there's the whole, you know when is this event going to happen? And like all that kind of stuff, you know, people ask me that question all the time. And my response to that is why would we sit around thinking about something that we just don't know when it's going to happen? Right. Why not instead focus on, and I'm not, I am not criticizing anybody. I'm just speaking from what I focus on. I focus more on what I can do now to evolve my soul. I believe that the reason why we're here is for soul evolution. So my path is trying to help people live in the now so that they can focus on what they need to be doing to uh, manifest their sole purpose. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think that some people can get caught up thinking that they're going to be saved by 
some event coming that's going to like, you know, change the world and all of this stuff. And then they're going to waste their time waiting for something instead of actually focusing on what they should be doing, which is whatever it is that, you know, their mission is. You can, you can become still and now you're not doing anything because you're just kind of waiting for something to come save you. And I don't believe, and I just don't think that that's the right way to look at this stuff. Sure. You can consider, Oh, what might be. Yeah, of course we should. We use our imagination and we pull out of the ether in order to manifest. But I think it's so important to uh, take control of your life and not feel disempowered. Well, that's exactly right. And I want to continue this conversation after the break. There's uh, so much here that we need to, uh, I, I always use the word ponder, but that's one of my favorite words. This is Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Teresa Yanaris. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Mental Guard on JimmyChurchRadio.com. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER, stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation. And Angioprim is the result, a safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now for a special radio offer from Angioprim. That's angioprim.com slash radio, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com slash radio, or call 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Your contact for current news and trending topics, KGRARadio.com. What can I say about the most popular tea on the Internet? And what do customers say about life change tea at GetTheTea.com? A lot. But by federal law, we at GetTheTea.com cannot make claims to how this product can enhance your health. We cannot even post our testimonies without being in compliance. So how do we get past the hump? Try our products at GetTheTea.com and see for yourself. You can send us a testimony, but we just can't post it. Bummer. Our products are GMO-free and organic. We pride ourselves in being the best we can be, and we urge you to take charge of your health. We're 11 years strong, and many of our customers have shared their successes with friends and family. Protect your colon. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Dot com. Get the T dot com. Get the T dot com. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony, damn it! This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. All right, 
right, welcome back. Fade to Black having fun with everybody there on uh, the bunker cam. You like that transmission interrupted? <laughs> oh, so much fun. I got to thank Samuel Smith for that. That is an amazing uh, piece of sculpture. The painting, the artwork, and those eyeballs on Akak. So cool. Teresa, um, the like, getting back to this message, um, which... Uh, the Cobra message, which seems a little leaning, a little religious, but to to call something the event, uh, what are we talking about, you know, to come back after the event? What is there to come back to and what is the event? Real quick, Mars Attacks and X-Files, I think, were the only two movies that my parents ever let us watch as children. Uh, uh, Mars Attacks is a documentary, by the way. <laughs> Full on. <laughs> <laughs> Full on documentary. Um, oh, is it? Man. Isn't that? Are you looking at the bunker cam? Is that an amazing piece of sculpture? Look at that, man! Look at those eyeballs, man. man the that... sandbox is cracking me up. AK said the inner earth has to beat LA. The inner earth has to beat LA. <laughs> it is. It, it is LA. I'm, I'm sure. So, um, yeah. What is the event? What do you? What do you think? Uh, what do you think it could be? I mean, that's a little bit out of my realm. I don't really talk about the event, but I mean, some people say that it could be a solar flash. I mean, I can tell you from my background, you know, I was raised Catholic. So, you know, the idea of revelation, you know, there being an end of the world that um, in the Bible, it says that it wouldn't be a flood. God would never send a flood. The next time it would be a fire. Um, So that's in the Bible. And then being raised to be what my parents called rapture ready. That was how I was raised. And what rapture ready means is being ready for the ascension, ready for the next step. You know, when I think about uh, the event, I think about a drastic change, something that uh, allows the collective consciousness to shake and break and grow. Right. So it's like that turning point, that that wave that breaks and then everybody has to choose, you know, and every day we're choosing through free will service to others, service to self that, you know, and then when you go through this shift, whether it's because of a solar flash or something that changes on the planet, we move into a space uh, that, you know, changes the earth. So it changes us. Now we have the opportunity as souls to move on to the next level. That, that could be what that looks like. You know, when I, when I think about the journey we're on, I think about it from a spiritual standpoint. And I do believe that, we came from the same source and we're on a journey. Our souls are on a journey. And at some point, these souls realize that they're all connected. And I think that we're going through that now. We're learning about the interconnectivity that we have. And I think when that happens, we move to the next level to where now we are going back to source. So when you think about the toroidal universe, you think about all the souls being ejected out of the center and then they're learning and they're growing, they're evolving, and then they realize their oneness, and then they start to evolve together and come back around to the center again. And I think that the event on this planet will happen at, when we are deciding to get to the next level, and it all happens synchronistically, and then we're able to evolve out. Did you um, did you ever get a chance, especially back in the day? Did you uh, ever follow Cobra? No, I did not. I knew Cobra existed only because people, because I interview people on my channel and through my project, and they say, "Oh, you should interview Cobra." So I had heard about him, but I never uh, followed him. No, I back back when oh, man, it seems like forever ago, but it's really not. Um, so I'm going to guess and say 2010. I don't know if, it, or maybe it was before that or slightly after that. We're sitting here in 2018 and so much has happened. Uh, you know, uh, I could be wrong about the dates, but um, I I went back, uh, back then, I, I read a ton of it. And it lasted, I was surprised to see the size of the community. It seemed to be large, like ginormous big. And... I, for some reason, fell out of it. I just didn't resonate. 
something I, I just didn't connect with it. I, I fell out. And over the last, you know, few years where people have come back and asked me to, you know, not only have Cobra on the show and, and what do I think about this and this statement that just happened? I didn't, I, I, I was surprised. I, I hadn't heard about Cobra for so long that I didn't know if the movement and the things out there were still, were still happening, but apparently they are. I don't know if the community is as large as it used to be. I, I, I really don't know. I have no idea. I, and I haven't gone back and checked. But um, I didn't resonate with it. But certain people did. And, I, I you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm like at a loss for words uh, with all of this. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's uh, – look, I'll, I'll be straight. I don't know if this is an attempt to – revive right the cobra the cobra universe and the message and the resistance um i i don't know i don't know if it's if it's real i don't know but uh it being connected the timing of it to your post of about your dream i don't know i don't it feels almost opportunistic well, I think that, you know, as media persons and, you know, we have the internet so people can access content from whatever content creators they want. I mean, you go on YouTube, it's insane how many people are on YouTube. You know, you can, anyone can point a camera at their face and speak to the world now. So it's kind of a cluster because now you're, you're weeding through so much information and, you know, you say resonate, you know, the word resonate and people throw that around a lot. And I think what it comes down to, I'm going to take it back to the soul journey like I usually do, because I think that everybody is on a path, everyone's on their path and they're going to come in contact with information that's going to resonate and some that doesn't, right? And we need to assess all pieces of data that you can, that you come in contact with and try to figure out what you can distill that's useful to you on your path. And so we're all different beings. We all have different uh, experiences and perceptions and everything. So it's interesting to see the different communities that arise out of certain uh, arenas and certain messages. And you can see uh, what that looks like. I mean, like taking this into the mainstream, I mean, it's insane to me that I can publish a YouTube video about Ariana Grande, Jimmy, and it gets 78,000 views, okay, mm -hmm. in like days. You know, people care so much about Ariana Grande, but if I make something about, you know, disclosure consciousness and something that's like really deep, you know, you get a couple thousand views, you know, or a few thousand views. And it's just, it's amazing to me to look at that and, and to get that image of like trying to figure out what makes people tick what do people resonate with and why do they resonate with it and how can we improve the world experience and our co-creative process through assessing the information and then trying to push positive messages i think is so important and this is giving us an avenue to speak to that for sure yeah it blow look look i'll I'll say it out loud. Nobody else will say it. I'll say it right now. How can a video on YouTube about a makeover and putting on eyeshadow get 50 million views? Yet we talk about, <laughs> we talk about, and, and, you know, and 10 million subscribers, right? And we talk about our beautiful blue planet and trying to move forward and be kind to every and 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 ask questions and share knowledge and we struggle now is there a problem here <laughs> is there a, <laughs> right you know uh, you're absolute you're 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 so right i mean you're so right i i it, it blows my mind it blows my mind so uh do we have an issue yeah we do um, have you, <laughs> I have a friend who has a theory actually about this and he's his theory. And I like his theory <laughs> because it makes me feel better. But his theory is that alternative media 
the numbers have been skewed on social media platforms like YouTube and things like that where, and, and it's interesting because people will tell me that they will go and like one of my videos and their like keeps going away. And so they have to go and they have to like it again. I get messages and emails from people that say they've subscribed to my YouTube channel and that all of a sudden they're poof, not subscribed to my YouTube channel anymore. So it, it tells me that there's something funky going on. Potentially it's something interesting to consider that you can have a uh you know a pop star make a song make a, a music video publish it on youtube it's boom immediately number one on trending with millions of views you know and other videos they're not that way so it makes you wonder if the numbers are not actually what they are because if you think about it there's a whole aspect of mind control that can come in there where if you see those numbers now you think that more people are focusing on that material therefore the bandwagon effect comes in and now you want to jump on that bandwagon you want to make sure you're relevant so you have to make sure to watch the makeup tutorial or the music video or whatever that looks like mm -hmm. but it could just be something that's fabricated to make you believe that you need to be focusing on that i can guarantee you 100,000 hits in one hour 100,000 views in one hour. You want my secret? All what? you do is, is the video title is How to Get My Beautiful Blue Hair. And you're done. You're done. You just post. It. <laughs> and the thumbnail is you with your blue hair. 100,000. 100,000 in, in, in an hour. Um, but isn't that a fascinating uh, statement about about us today? And we've got to, we need to somehow pull off of it. We need to, and, and we're doing that. And your message is very clear, um, who you are and, and what you are uh, out there talking about is very, very clear. And I'm seeing the changes. I am. I am really, really seeing the changes, and, and I really enjoy it. Um, oh, I wanted to ask you this uh, before we continue the conversation. Have you ever met Cobra? No, I have not. Okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. But I did. I did search on YouTube for how to get my beautiful blue hair, and I saw a video here that's about blue hair, and it has one hundred and sixty-two thousand views. And is, you are quick with that. By the way, I mentioned uh, Zoolander. And before I got Zoolander even finished, you posted the uh, picture of uh, Thoreau. That was uh, that was fast. I got uh, your back, bro. Man, I don't know how. You, see, you millennials, you guys know how to do this stuff really quick. I can never do that. I can't do that. And look, Rita just posted. <laughs> do you see Rita's post? Get them through cutting you some blue hair. Perfect. <laughs> I'm going to retweet that. That's uh, really cool. Um, Rita's quick too. You yeah, she is. Quick. She is. She is. She she's very focused. She's uh, very focused. Now uh, we're almost at the end, but I don't want to wrap. I may keep you for a little bit of overtime, but before we we even get there. Um, the use of YouTube, I, I went back and did an analysis on the consciousness community, the conspiracy community, and I came up with some pretty crazy numbers for subscribers on YouTube. And it's somewhere between 40 and a hundred million subscribers to different consciousness, uh, conspiracy type channels, whatever it is, anything but Ariana Grande, okay? Now, that's that's a pretty significant number. Now, there's only 7.5 billion people on the planet, but it is a significant number of people that are going out and looking for, uh, that, that are seekers of knowledge. I think that's pretty impressive, don't you? I think it's very impressive, and I think it's really cool that it's worldwide, too. When I look at my website and I look at Stillness in the Storm's website, we can take a look at where the traffic's coming from, and it comes from all over, South America, it comes from Australia, I mean, everywhere. It's it's amazing, and what I love to do, and I did this on my live stream on Facebook last week, I said, shout out, uh, type in the comments where you're from, and it was so much fun to go through and see where people were dropping in where they were from. So it is, it's worldwide, and people are ready to jump on board, especially with like mass meditations. That's huge, so I want to do more of that for sure. But people are ready to get involved. People are ready for it. 
Well, and that's the beauty, you know, like face uh, for fade to black. We own Barbados. It's a joke. You're supposed to laugh right there. Supposed- I did. I was just trying to be quiet with my laughter because I don't want to like be loud on the radio. All 16,000 of them. Amazing. I know, man. We're taking over, man. Taking I'm going to make you a Barbados trophy. Uh, Barbados. I can already see it. A Barbados <laughs> t-shirt. Barbados rocks. And we love Barbados. We love Barbados. I'm not making, I'm not making light of Barbados. Now, um, the, the online webinars that you do, um, why do, how do I, how do I say this right? Why did you choose to do the live webinar thing? How many people do you have attending uh, the webinars and what, what, how do you choose the material? Because some of it is pretty controversial. It's because I don't have enough to do in my day, Jimmy. No, I swear I am a masochist because I I get like, you know, maybe five seconds of peace and I go, I'm going to throw an online conference. This is a great idea. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Well, yeah. So it was after Conscious Life Expo and I wanted to, I've been, I had been doing the webinars for like maybe five or six months before that. And my idea behind it was I wanted to create a platform to bring community together. Like that is a huge part of divine frequency is creating and nurturing that community. So I started doing webinars and, uh, the content was all over the place. You know, some of it is very controversial, you know, false flags, uh, cabal manipulation and control tactics, things like that. But you know, it all needs to be talked about and I'm not scared to traverse into that territory. Uh, yes, it's controversial. Yes. It probably, Probably puts me on lists, but you know, I've probably been on lists my whole life. So I'm going to continue down whatever path I need to go down. It's the narrow path and it's the great work. And I'm going to, I'm going to say what needs to be said. But, um, recently I did my divine frequency conference, uh, and it was amazing. We had six speakers and we talked about all different kinds of things, pineal gland, consciousness, evolution. I mean, you name it, we talked about it. And it was an amazing experience, very uplifting and uh, lots of downloads coming through. Laura Eisenhower was amazing. And mind you, all the talks were 11 minutes long and she was on point. She spoke in 11 minutes and it was like, she got everything out and it was like perfect. And I know people, cause Laura is like one of our most amazing people in this community and her talks, like she gives so much information that it's like, I just want to sit in front of her for like three hours and listen to her talk. So people are like, wow, she has so much great content. What is she going to provide in 11 minutes? And I tell you, it was an amazing download. And she was able to just like, boom, cut it and ship it and send it. And it was like such a fun platform to have these powerhouse speakers come in, do this online conference where they're speaking for 11 minutes. And then we had a panel and it allowed people to come in and they don't have to pay to, for a plane ticket across the country. They can sit there on a Saturday afternoon for three hours. They can listen to a very great panel of speakers and get a whole bunch of chock full information instead of having to sit through an hour and a half each. It was all within three hours and it went really well. Um, I had uh, 70 signups. That's incredible. You know, and the the reason why I set you up for that is because you also did uh, an online presentation to respond to Cobra. And what I wanted to ask you about that was those that were there, were they familiar with Cobra or were they there because they were familiar with Cobra and were interested in what you had to say? There were a lot of people there because they were interested in Cobra, I'm sure. But I think that it was just an interesting concept in general, like just this inner earth invitation that alone was like clickbaity. If you think about it, cause people are like, what, huh? What is this? And there was so much going on that had been like building for a couple of weeks that I think people were just really interested in what was happening because of all the articles that were flying around all of the, uh, I mean, it was a storm of people talking about, um, you know, oh, is this a negative agenda that's trying to be pushed? Or are they trying to steal you off of the surface? Teresa, don't go, you know, and then there's the whole other side where it's like, oh, this is, you know, such an amazing opportunity. I would want to go. I want to find out more information about what this looks like. So it was like from all across the board. Uh, I think it was a lot of people that did follow Cobra, but then there were, you know, some people also that that were just interested because of the, uh, the social media storm that had occurred. Do you feel, you said earlier, which is 
one of the interesting ways to look at this, that it was a collision of divine frequency, you know, with Cobra and the resistance. Uh, and it seemed like it was a forced uh, collision. Do you, do you need to separate yourself from that? That's a great question, and I'm glad that you asked it because we didn't really get a chance to speak about this yet. Yeah, whenever – okay, so I come from a background in journalism for those listening to Fade to Black that don't already know me. And so I have a degree in journalism. And when he published his article and he called my name out and he linked my article, that was completely fair use. And I did go on the record and say that. You know, it, He had every right to to do what he did. But what happened after that was that people got confused and this is where it kind of became a little frustrating for me because people assumed that because Cobra was publishing my name in his article and I had published an article with the name Cobra in it, now all of a sudden I'm like blindly endorsing Cobra. Now, this was like very frustrating to me. There were people saying all kinds of stuff. And so I had to stand up. I had to, to come out and ba- make a public statement, which is why I did the live stream. And I followed up with an article and I made sure the headline was very clear because the unfortunate reality is that people will not read the article. They won't try to understand what's actually happening. They will take one look at a headline and they'll assume that they know what's going on. So I literally published an article that the headline was, I published a dream, not a blind endorsement of Cobra. And that's what I did so that it was very clear that it's like, hey, I am my own person. I am divine frequency. Uh, That is my project. Just because this collision has happened, you know, I stand by my dream and what what that tells and how we can use that to learn about our soul missions. Now, I'm not saying that it's that people are really going to be asked to go to the inner earth. I don't know that. That's not my information. That's Cobra's information. So, so yes, I'm glad you asked that, Jimmy, because I did have to come out and I did have to make a, a very clear public statement saying that, uh, you know, I don't blindly endorse what Cobra is doing. What's the blowback been like? Um, well, there were a few people that, uh, kind of shockingly, you know, that I thought they were my friends and they were kind of saying all this stuff behind my back, but uh, that kind of just took its toll and went away because I think people were just confused and they were making assumptions. And I think that, you know, you can make an assumption and you can think that someone is easily swayed, but what the reality was, I wasn't being easily swayed. People were looking at, uh, the very baseline of what was going on, not knowing it because it was very confusing. I mean, Jimmy, we had to go through a whole bunch just to get to where we are now. So I get that. It's kind of a long story. So people were just assuming, oh, Teresa's blindly following Cobra. And people have been in this community for a long time and they've been following Cobra for years and years and years. And now all of a sudden my name's in his article and people are slandering me. So it was like really frustrating, especially because I'm a public person and I do take this seriously. And so but it did work out for the best in the end. So the blowback, I would say, is at this point non-existent. Whatever happened was in the past, and I used this as a learning experience, and I remained in my integrity, and I've been receiving nothing but positive feedback uh, from people sending me emails saying, thank you, Teresa, for you know having integrity, speaking to the issues, looking at the bigger picture, and uh, giving us like a full picture of what's going on. And that's what I will continue to do. That's what you can get through Divine Frequency. That's what I stand by. That's who I am in my project. And I will continue to follow that path. Yeah, and I'm I I'm very I'm very careful about about opinions. Could be, you know, truthfully, my opinion does not matter. It's your opinion, uh Teresa that matters. It's my guests that matter. My opinion doesn't matter. But I don't want to offend anybody out there if you are resonating with a message or information, then then follow your heart, follow your path, follow your remote, fo- follow that. I don't want to discourage anybody. Um, and I know that if I ever venture and, and dip my toes in certain waters, I get I get the email. You know, I get the blowback from it, and it's not really my intention. It's it, it's not. It's uh, people have uh, emotions tied up in this. They have time you know, tied up in, in things. And I don't want to discourage anybody's, uh, you know, quest, uh, for seeking the truth because it's a very difficult, uh, uh, it's a very difficult area to find answers, you know, to find the things that you're looking for. 
yeah, go, yeah. And, go you ahead. know, it's hard to be a public person because, oh, I think I'm losing you for a second. No, you're you want to make sure that you're saying the right things and saying what you actually feel. So there's like that whole element coming in where you want to make sure that you're being clear and you're being true to yourself and you're being positive. So, and I think you do a great job of that. Um, and you know, I think people take things really seriously and I think that there's also room for humor. I try to like be off the cuff and bubbly because you know, this is, this is our lives that we're living. We got to throw some happiness into it. You know, like I started my live stream with, this is Teresa and Eris at divine frequency reporting you to you live from the inner earth. They let me have the internet and it's wonderful down here. And it's, you got to kind of lighten things up a little bit and have a good time. As much as you can. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to. You want to do a little overtime with us? Sure. Okay. See, that's what I'm talking about. She's part of this family. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Teresa Yanaris, and we're talking about her recent articles about the dream uh, that she had, and she wrote about it, and the response from Cobra after that. So, very open conversation tonight. We will continue all of this after this short break. Doing a little overtime with Teresa Yanara. Stay with us. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your girl Vivica Fox here, and you are listening to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires. This year we've experienced more than our fair share. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. And last month I decided to make sure my family does not have to worry about food should we get caught in a real emergency situation. Introducing Numana, a healthy, storable product that tastes so good that you'll want to eat it every day instead of just during those times of duress. All Numana products have a 25-year shelf life, are MSG and GMO-free, no preservatives, and are made in America. With the Numana pack in your home, you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that you've protected your family. Not only have I tasted and tested, I own it. Now you can too. Just click on the Numana banner on JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code Jimmy when you order. In addition to a discount, we'll send you an autographed Fade to Black t-shirt. Seriously, go Beckley Tappy. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black, you create the ultimate brew of Fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go Beckley Tepe. Hey, can we talk about something serious for a minute? Your age. Getting old has its perks. But remember, being a few years younger... You know, your hair was thicker, you didn't have so many wrinkles, that extra weight wasn't haunting you, and you just felt better. Well, we can't turn back the clocks and go back 10 or 15 years, but you can start feeling and looking 10 or 15 years younger with Nature's Youth RSF. It's a doctor-formulated daily supplement that helps your body maintain its peak performance and fight the aging process. Imagine sleeping better, looking better, and feeling better. See how Nature's Youth RSF has helped thousands of people just like you at naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. The holidays are coming. Imagine how it will feel when your family and friends are asking you what you did to look so good. Your secret will be Nature's Youth RSF. It's time to start looking better and feeling better. Learn more and order your Nature's Youth RSF at naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. <laughs> It's not a life 
lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Church. Our guest tonight, Teresa Yanaris. Tomorrow night, Linda Moulton Howe. That's right. Wednesday night, George Nori and Victoria Gavari is going to be here, but we're also going to have some special guests uh, that will be joining us on Wednesday night, and so you're not going to want to miss that. And Thursday is another Fader night with John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom Live, followed by... Open lines all night long, and inevitably, I got uh, the emails uh, coming in tonight that, uh, why haven't I ever had Cobra on the show? You know, you need to get Cobra on the show, and I have have, uh, had very open discussions uh, with Cobra over the years, and the invitation is open. It's that if he's going to come on the show, we're not going to do the uh, voice-altering thing that he does. He's going to speak in his normal voice, and that has always been the roadblock. But I don't want to turn this into uh, uh, something that the show is not. I I, I don't want to have hidden anything. I want to have the guest uh, to be the guest on the show, and I don't want to have any, any voice effects. And, uh, I, Teresa, I don't know if you've ever listened to Cobra, but that was one of the things that I kind of uh, disconnected with Cobra. Because when I read the material, that was one thing. When I heard Cobra, that was another. And to me, it wasn't the same. It didn't have the same effect on me. And I, I didn't really dig the the voice altering stuff to to hide his identity or whatever the reasons were for that. But um, it it seemed like two different messages. When when you you know how it is when you read something and then you hear the author speak, <laughs> you're like, well, that ain't the same thing, <laughs> right? Right. Well, and your it's your show. You're in your right to to choose how you want to. Get, provide a certain experience for your listeners. So that makes sense. And I also do want to say on the record that I did reach out to Cobra today via email and ask if he had anything that he wanted me to include. I didn't hear back from him. I know he gets a whole ton of emails, but I just wanted to say that on the, on the record, because, you know, I, I did reach out there because I feel like we need to make sure that we're doing that kind of stuff. So, um, so that's there. And I do have respect for, Cobra in a professional sense. So I just want to also say that as well. You know, this is brought up an opportunity for us to speak to a whole lot of different things. And, and I'm, I'm neutral, you know, I, I'm, I speak about all kinds of different things. I'm a public person. I'm not going to get out here and, and sling mud as much as I can. Right. You know, the only time I think that I ever got into drama with anyone was when I was called out last year about, uh, something that was completely not true. And I did have to go on the record about that kind of stuff, but this is different. I feel like we're all just having a, a conversation about something that's interesting. Well, to be honest. Yeah. well, you know, you did have the dream and that's, that's what this show is about, you know, his, right. and, and what happened after uh, with Cobra, that's what this show is about, but it's about you and your dream. Uh, somebody just posted, Sarah just said, or when he wants to make an appearance, um, I'll say this. I, I, I met Cobra um, and he, uh, well, he caught me by surprise is what he did. But anyway, he came up to me and, and stuck his hand out and I was looking down at the time and he came up and said, hi, Jimmy, um, I'm Cobra. And I looked up and we connected eyes. We shook hands and we talked for, uh, about 15 or 30 seconds. And then I had turned and then I turned back, and he was gone, by the way. and But I know what he looks like, right? And so I tried to uh, find, to see if he was running around, you know, but I, I didn't see him again. 
after that. So I don't know if other people, and there was a thousand people that were there around us at this moment. And I'm not joking about that. But I'm not, I don't think anybody knew that he was in the room. Where is he from? I, I, yeah, I've, I've been told not to talk about that. Oh. Um, so, you, oh, you, you know sound what? so official, Jimmy. Well, you, look, <laughs> look, there were, um, there were some conversations that I had had with some of his reps, um, uh, over the years. And they told me some things about, you know, where he lived and, and stuff and that it couldn't be discussed on the air. And, and if he was going to come on the air without his voice altering stuff, that I wouldn't disclose his location. I said, okay, that, you know what, I can, that I can do. I, I'll respect that. God. But I was told, yeah, yeah, very, uh, very interesting. We'll save all of that for off of the air. <laughs> the audience is like, church, you suck. But, <laughs> but, but anyway, very interesting looking guy. And, uh, I, I wanted to figure out if anybody knew that that's who he was. You know, if that would, you know, because there were a lot of people around us at that moment. Um, but I don't think anybody knew that that was Cobra. I really, I honestly don't. There was no, he was by himself. That, from what I could see. Yeah, yeah. So I can say that I've met him. I know what he looks like. And uh, if it was indeed him, but I'm pretty sure that it was. Um, there were, uh, things that were leading up to that moment that I knew that he was, he was around, I should say. I'm trying to dance right now. Am I dancing good or am I kind of blowing it? <laughs> you're, you're doing a great job, Jimmy. I'm, I'm rooting for you over I'm, here on this I'm, side of the line. I'm just dancing. Um, uh, is Cobra. Well, let me tell you something funny. I'm going to change the subject for a second because okay. it's something funny. Right. Okay. So. Uh, this whole dream experience for me was like really funny, right? Because it just, the internet exploded and it was just like crazy. So much stuff was happening. Well, I sent the article to my brother and he, his response was, if a random person comes up to you and tells you to disappear down a deep, dark hole, leaving all personal belongings behind, please do not go with them. They're going to have to pick you up in a hovering spacecraft. My sister only rides in style. Right on. I could dig it. Like, Thanks, bro. <laughs> right on. <laughs> right on. Um, I remember, okay, so I had never heard of Cobra until tonight. Really? Now, see, isn't that interesting? That's from Kim. And that uh, that is interesting. That that I would have thought that most in the... In, in our community have, have heard of Cobra, have, have read some things over the years. But that's 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 interesting. Um, I did, I don't know if he's ever appeared in public though. I remember everything that I had ever seen with Cobra, um, the videos and stuff. Everything was disguised. I don't think he's ever revealed himself. Not that I know of. I could be wrong here. I could be completely wrong, and and he has, but. Um, when I say that he was interesting looking, it, it, he was, he's got a striking, he's got a striking vibe. I'm not going to say what he looks like. That just would be uncool, but, um, or, or describe him to, you know, he's very private about that, but I was like, wow, wow. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. And Eric Stitt just said, I too never heard of Cobra beyond GI Joe tonight. Um, he's probably from the Seattle area. Nope, that would be incorrect. Oh, so we're doing, um, what's the game that you play when you write a word on a card and you stick it to your head? <laughs> what's that game called? And you've got to figure out who the personality is. Isn't it heads up or something? Oh man, I don't remember. You know, you know the game, right? You can see, yeah, yeah. right? So, and so you have to ask questions and eventually you're going to figure it out. I'm not playing that game tonight. It's heads up. Yeah. They're just going to guess and check until you tell them. Right. <laughs> they're guess and check. I won't be revealing that. What is fleek? <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that you just said that. <laughs> what is fleek? On, Am I showing my say, age right now? 
I'm going to teach you something. Okay. And you'll, you'll look really cool to Rita, okay? Because I know that Rita knows this. So you just talk. You have to say on fleek, though. Like if something's really cool, you're like, oh, man, that dress is on fleek. So it's on fleek. Oh, how old do you have to be to sound cool saying that? I think that you can be any age and sound cool saying on fleek. Well, I still say crunk. My dad has been saying crunk forever, and pe- some people would laugh, and I'm like, I think that's cool that my dad says crunk. Um, so I'm trying to think what we would say when I was a kid. Um, hmm. Do do millennials still say the word dude? I do. Okay. A lot. All right. But I'm like, I'm actually, I think, like dead center of the millennials because I'm 30. So I think it's like six years under me and six years over me. So, but I say dude. Yeah, and I, I'm so paranoid. I, I wrote this article for On Stellar, and I've always felt weird about when would I be the old guy in the room? You know, at what point do you become the old guy? You know, I I don't, I, I, you know, it's a weird, you're 30, you're 30. This, you need to start thinking about that now. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks a lot. You do, you do, because there's a moment in time uh, where this starts to become reality. Okay. Where you are the old person in the room. When, when do you walk into a nightclub and you're the old person in the nightclub, right? When you look around and you realize I I really shouldn't be here, right? Okay. I basically so- always feel like the old person in the nightclub because I go into a nightclub and I'm like, well, how are we supposed to have meaningful conversation in here? And then I know that I'm the old person right. in the nightclub. Exactly, exactly. So, I, and I've <laughs> always been really conscious of that because I remember, you know, when you're 20, 25, you know, and you're in a nightclub and you look around and you go, you <laughs> That guy over there is too old to be in here. And you know that he stands out, (laughs) right? And everybody knows it. And he probably knows it, too. Well, at what point do I become the old person in the room? Because I don't feel like on the inside that I'm old. Well, we've got some feedback from Christopher. He says that he thinks he's probably your age. He says that he thinks rad might equate to on fleek. Yeah, rad. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Just yeah. Okay, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Rad. Yeah, yeah. We says, should bring that back. Rad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to hear. Can, <laughs> we can sit around and drink chilled vodka and say rad. Well, and what Perfect. what 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 um what amazes me and I that's why I wrote the article that I can have so many uh, obviously young. I'm 54. 54 it kills me to say that out loud because I don't I don't feel 54. I I feel 24. I feel 30. I certainly don't feel 54. I don't know what I look like. That's another story. But to have uh, so many young people come up to me and say that I'm cool and say that they really enjoy the show and say that I'm hip and, you know, and that they get it. And that make that puts me in the comfort zone, right? Because I am uncomfortable. I'm, I am. I know, I know that I'm the old guy at the party now. But to have the the younger crowd come up and say, you know what, it's okay, man. You know, you're cool, you're hip. Can we, you know, it's when they call me Uncle Jimmy that all of that goes out the window. <laughs> Tell us another story, well, Uncle Jimmy. But but I'm I, I'm I'm okay with that. I think that uh, this the show has been able to do that, and you're a big part of why I'm still hip and cool. I think you're safe, Jimmy. I think you're totally safe. Well, and you look at what you guys have built. I mean, I I listen to your show. I've been listening to it for years. And I can sit out, hang out on Twitter, laugh at some hilarious memes, kick it in the sandbox with my friends. And it's a community. It's an all-ages community that we hang out in here that you've built. So 
And you see, well, and you see that. I know that I've 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 given you a lot of crap about that over you know for so long that uh, you have an audience that is it's your generation. They 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 click with you and they they get your message. And and I'm so appreciative of who you bring into the community, and and we need you. You're a big part of that. But it it allows the the younger generation wants to know that we don't. Uh, how do I say this? We don't. You know how it is when you go down the street and you run into somebody that's older that looks at you and shoots you a look because you have blue hair and are crazy wearing some crazy clothes, you know, and that, and that, that's a put off, you know what I mean? But in our community, the UFO community, trust me, the, the 50, 60 year old, 70 year old person that's walking around at this community and they look and they see you with your blue hair. They love it. They think you're cool. Do you understand? And it's it's different in our community than it is out there in the real world. And that's why we need you. <laughs> well, I feel like I got lucky because, you know, I come from a professional background and then I went and took my professional career into this industry where I can have blue hair, which is amazing because had I gone to work for CNN, no mermaid hair for me. So I lucked out and uh, there's no going back for me. I love my blue hair. Well, well I mean, and- I will probably do additional colors and so with uh, throw some purple in there before contact and are are you are you impressed with that when you go out to these conferences like the conscious life expo or contact in the desert where it's it's all ages and you know it's it's the united colors of benetton where you know what i mean (laughs) where everything is represented and everybody's cool with it it's so true it's so much fun you know i started going to conferences last year and it's really a blast to get to just go hang out with a bunch of people all across the board. Look, everyone looks different. Everybody is different ages and, and everybody's just together talking about the same stuff. It's amazing. Well, and they, the reason you're going to be teaching up at soul tech and Rita and I, you know, saw uh, one of your presentations uh, last year where you were teaching and I said, I turned to Rita and I said, this is exactly, this is exact right now what, what Teresa is doing. This is what the community needs. It's nice to hear people give a presentation. It's a whole nother thing where you are walking away with some knowledge. You were taught something that you didn't have before Teresa spoke. And I think that's very important. What are you going to be uh, teaching all of us up at Soul Tech? Oh man, Jimmy, I am so excited. Like we're going to be going gangbusters up there at Soul Tech. The talks that I'm giving are fully interactive workshops. So it's not like me standing on a stage talking. No, I come from a background in education and corporate training. This is going to be so much fun. We're going to be doing skits. We're going to be doing all kinds of stuff that like you're going to want to take with you. One of them is going to be about it's the name of it is like advanced truth seekers workshop. I don't remember exactly what I titled it, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And then I'm doing another workshop about tarot, which you're actually going to be assessing your life through archetypes and that's also going to be fully interactive. So it's if you come to Soul Tech and you're looking to have uh, an experience where you're really going to be able to take tips and tricks away from you, and also like an amazing experience with small groups and the community, you'll, you're definitely going to want to come see my talks for sure. So how do you teach tarot? And and for somebody like me that's mystified by it, love the deck of cards. I love the artwork. Can I actually learn how to read tarot cards? Absolutely. There are so many different ways to learn tarot, and I teach it in a different way depending on who you are. It's going to be tailored to you and what you're trying to get out of tarot. So first you want to ask yourself what your goal is. But if your goal is to uh, see what it's about or, or see if you can like do a reading without having to put too much time and energy into it, then I normally say uh, go for intuitive tarot, meaning you look at a card and then I would ask you, what does this card tell you? What do you see on this card and what feelings do you get when you look at this card? 
And when you do that exercise, it'll actually allows you to connect to the archetypes within the card and you come up with your own uh, depiction of what it is. And it's, I, it's really a successful way to start immediately connecting to tarot in a way that is useful and practical right out the gate. Man, 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 I am so down for this. And, yeah. and no, I cannot. I cannot wait. And uh, there is one other important thing that we need to discuss: the bowls, the singing bowls. So, oh, yeah. are we going to get together out in the medicine wheel? I think that's a fantastic idea. No, I need. I need more than that. Let's recreate it. So we can get us out there. We can grab a few of us with those singing bowls, man. Those are so big. I think they had like seven or eight. We should just go gangbusters and see if we can use them all. Get James in there with us. We could do a singing bowl meditation with the whole group. Because, just so the audience understands, they've heard me talk about this a lot. My my little off-world experience that that happened to me in the medicine wheel was with Teresa and I I I need to check that out again yeah man that was such an interesting experience and I did a YouTube video on that because it was such an incredible time we went out there to this medicine wheel we all sat down we played a few of us played some singing bowls Jimmy came out to the circle, brought in his whole crew. Everyone stood in a circle, and we had this amazing meditation. And then afterwards, what was so cool about this was Rita went out there taking pictures, happened to get a picture of one of the signs that seemed to, like, have chunks out of it, like, boom, 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 side to side to side. And it was almost as if you could see a rip in dimensions. And so this picture blew up on the ranch, and everyone was talking about it. And uh, because there's so much energy there at Isetti Ranch, Ranch in Trout Lake, Washington, James Gilliland's ranch, they talk about how there are portals that open up to other dimensions. And so it was a really interesting experience to see firsthand. And that it was, you know, do you have that amazing experience where you went boom, astrally out traveling into the ethers? And you have, uh, you know, these pictures that are showing up that have some anomaly going on. And with all the experiences that people have or with respect to portals and stuff like that, it was just an incredible experience for us all to have together. It was such a blast. It was one of the uh, uh, funnest, most profound uh, weekends of, of my life. It was so cool. And to have, you know, you and Rita and, and the rest of us there in the medicine wheel to share that experience together. It was, uh, it was just incredible. It was, you know, and I don't know, I don't know what was the catalyst. I don't know if it was the singing bowls, if it was the moment, if it was the medicine wheel itself. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I do know that I tried to go back uh, when you were done playing, you know, and when I came out of wherever I went to. <laughs> and, and you were there. You saw me. I, I leaned over and, and shut my eyes again and tried to, tried to go back. And and I couldn't, I couldn't. It was pretty frustrating. It was it was. Yeah. Like, I mean, because I got pulled out of it. I got pulled in, right? I didn't ask for it. I didn't volunteer. I got pulled in, and then pulled out, and then I wanted. To, <laughs> I couldn't go back. It was pretty bizarre. It was like invitation only. I don't know how to explain it. It was it was incredible. But I'm just glad you were there uh, with. Do Rita you think Michelle. maybe? Yeah. Do you think on a soul level you actually you made that a thing like you made yourself okay with going and astrally projecting on a soul level like you had some kind of contract that you had fulfilled You know uh Teresa I I don't know what happened Okay I don't know I I do know that um even though I don't really want to discuss it uh, uh about you know it's so personal but I do know that it was involuntary. It was involuntary. It, it, I was taken. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's the only way that I can explain it. it, it if, you know, just, <laughs> you did bad, you know? And you have to, I wasn't prepared for it. And so I didn't know wow, what to do with the experience. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I didn't know. It was, uh, it was pretty amazing, well, though. 
what's really cool in the sandbox, people are talking about bringing their flutes, bringing their handmade drums, and man, we could just have a party out there. Sounds yeah, we're, like we're going to have fun at Soul Tech. Yeah, we're, we're, we've got some uh, musical things that are going to be pretty amazing that we have uh, planned, and so I can't wait. And I'll see you next week. You and Justin are going to be here for uh, Contact in the Desert. Safe travels. Thank you so much, Teresa. Great conversation tonight, as always. Thank you for having me, Jimmy. All the best, everybody. That is Teresa Yanaris. You can go to her YouTube channel, her her website. Everything is over at jimmychurchradio.com. And I've got to get out of here. I'm actually late for the network right now. I just didn't want to stop the conversation with Teresa. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Camurion. Show is produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Bob. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kovar, Webmaster, Drew, The Geek, Music, Doug Aldrich, Intro, Space Boy, SpaceboyMusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. Syndication is KGRA, The Planet. This broadcast zone and copyrighted 2018 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tomorrow night, right here, Linda Moulton Howe. Until then, everybody be safe. Go back, Lee Tappy.